Welcome back to Style Esports. This evening on the grid, we're having a best of three between Dionza Burgundy and Hail of Spades in our Targon division. This is our loser's bracket, which means that we've seen the stakes climb even a little bit higher. Now that the Rumble stage is over, these teams are fighting for their lives. The winner is going to be moving on to face Coco Melon in the semifinals, and the loser is going home tonight. My name is Llama, alongside me is Juicy, that are going to be bringing you all of the action here this evening for this best of three. Hello, hello, this is Juicy here, and yeah, I'm really excited on, especially when it comes to the loser bracket, because as you mentioned, everything is either go big or go home. However, the rules still apply, the same rules still apply, you got to have draft skills, you got to have at least the synergy of the team itself, along with how much uh how much the team comp is to fill in as it is so uh you basically need to have all three of those uh skills itself to basically win a game but every game can basically change itself depending on what you ban and what you basically pick uh and after that game after the first game you basically now have a second game to which they can now know what they're up against so each game that we progress upon i feel like they know they're gonna have to like figure out what they had to change or what they're gonna have to prove on that matter yeah, and that's what makes best of three so exciting, right, Juicy? Because there's just so many options and permutations. And you can like start scouting as you go later on to this tournament and starting to see what these teams starting are wanting to comfort and pick early on. And Till Stars Fall, the jungler for DA, played Varus in both of their wins last week. And so or uh, the Kindred did both their wins last week. So Hail of Spades is taking that away. But Burgundy, I mean, they're not gonna, you know, they're leaving out on the table here with the Karthus first pick. So now it looks like the response is going to be coming out of Hail of Spades. We're going to have to see what their response is going to be. Kindred was such a proud pick for DA Burgundy. And so because Hail of Spades noticed that and banned it away, we're going to have to see, um, you know, how they're going to be able to adapt. As Juicy was saying, there's a lot of adaptation that needs to come through early on in the series because, I mean, you got to be shaking things up and you got to leave it all on the table now. Sorry, can you hear me? Uh, my yeah, mic sure kind of cut it out. Okay. Uh, yeah, I did see, I did see the, uh, I did see the drafts and bands as it is. Uh, seemingly like they ban uh, the blue side band in Zona, Kaiza, and Lilia. Uh, especially I like how Lilia is very powerful because uh, although her uh, Clarence early game is not that very strong itself, that she may be, she's gonna be very vulnerable onto the level one if anybody decides to invade her space and just take advantage of those clears itself for level one. However, once she goes on for level six, that the team fight starts itself around objectives and such. She gets very, uh, she gets very useful on this fact itself. Although Karthus is a good replacement, I like, like I said before, I still think that he's very vulnerable. It determines on what they plan on use with Karthus, along with Udir. Actually, Udir actually is jungle maybe so, but um, with Milio, yeah, is this Karthus long. flex that Burgundy pulled out is that gonna be like a bot lane or a mid lane? What are you kind of thinking? Honestly, it kind of both relies on uh, Karthus bot. We never really see the Karthus jungle because, like I said, vulnerability. If he gets exposed right there in a the jungle as a 1v1 duelist, he's not going to do well. Uh, so I'm assuming he's just either going to play as a Karthus support, Karthus bot, or maybe in so Karthus mid. That's where the usual goes for. Um, like I said before, on the red side, though, Milio. Obviously, really good healer, but like I said, very vulnerable when it comes to not engage when it comes to engaging in team fights. Because if they go wrong in itself, she ha immediately has to use the ult to cleanse everyone out. LeBlanc, good pick. Kindred, I heard, is very powerful, especially with Trinity Force. So that's actually a nice ban. And with a Mumu, this is a CC battle. I feel like Red Team mo might be going for that CC draft as it is. Yeah, Hecarim, this is CC yeah. draft. I mean, and take a look at Burgundy. They're not slouching away from this crowd control either, Juicy. You got Nautilus and Udyr both locked down with some of that major crowd control. You know, Nautilus known as having CC and nearly all of their abilities here. And yeah, you said Halo Spades. I mean, they're taking it head on. You got a Mumu lockdown. You have Enchanted Crystal Arrow. You have the Onslaught of Shadows. And these are five, you know, four melee champions and some short range damage coming through. So this is going to be a brawl in game one. Um, yeah, seemingly like I said, as I said before, uh, the only difference between the red side, like I said, I mentioned the CC trap, is actually the blue side, they're actually going to go for engage, they're actually going to go for in dives, like we see the Nautilus right there, he's just going to do uh, what he needs to be done, a Nautilus doing Nautilus job, Udyr doing Udyr job, and yeah, I don't know about Karthus, but we're going to see. Find we're going to also find out what that Karthus is. But I do like the Karthus as a last resort because if he scales up with his AP damage, so he's going to throw a lot of damage to really deal those uh 
squishy players, uh, squishy champions, uh, to really mess up their comp and have them disengage from the red side. Yeah. And maybe so, maybe so. If anything goes right for the blue side, then they have every opportunity to d dive right there. So they're gonna have to possibly go for a little bit of a CC, a CC ADC, or possibly a looking like a top laner who's gonna just be going as a front line to really like dive in those fights, like I mentioned. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it looks like there is going to be quite a bit of skirmishing, but I think you'd call out that about Burgundy needing some kind of AD threat here because nothing showing so far for DA is looking like it's going to be very AD heavy quite yet. So, yeah, maybe there's some, you know, like a Varus or something that's going to provide some utility. You mentioned more crowd control as well. How do these comps kind of need to finish out in these last couple of picks, do you think, Kuzi? Uh, cause, uh, it's anybody's game. It's anybody's game from determining determining on what the synergy is. Like I said, it's all. It's not just about the champs itself. It, every champion ha uh, has different stats. Every champion has different damages at us at this point. So it depends on how you use it, and it, basically what each one can offer for a team sy team synergy fight as it is. And I mean, it looks like the synergy that Hail of Spades, they saw the crowd control locked in and they're doubling down. That's the synergy that this squad is going to be locking in for game one with an Orn in the top side as a blind pick, potentially. It looks like it's going to give a counter pick over to DA Burgundy with the Jax. And now, yeah, where's this AD pick going to be? I mean, yeah, you said, you know, maybe there's some scaling advantages. You can play early game aggression with Nautilus as well. With Kaisa being banned away, that's one of those premier champions that wants to be diving in. Ooh. But Tristana... That would be a rocket jump to just put you right in the middle of a fight, see if that is going to be the fifth and final pick for DA Burgundy. Uh, and they confirmed it, yeah, Tristana. And Tristana Nautilus itself is very powerful. Uh, the only thing I would watch out for, especially, like I said, level one as a Nautilus and Tristana, is that Tristana doesn't really have that much damage in terms of like her AD scaling. Uh, but once she, like I said, once she be able, is able to farm enough uh, with her E passive and whatnot, she's able to clear unlike most champions would do ash also would basically contest that also but to ming on oh okay that's actually a mumu support there so yeah. this is actually going to be oh my gosh i look at the hail of space trap right there that's permanent <laughs> cc right there too i'm oh, I, yeah. I like i just want to say i like how uh now this patch itself cc will be very important because the because Rito obviously would not care about how much damage scales of the cell. So what basically would take advantage for that? CC, crowd control will be very important for those who have damage scaling. So especially if you have Talia on the spot to basically poke a lot with their Q. Another with Hecarim, just dive right in with the 80 hits as it is. As CC with the ult, uh, ult and the, uh, the enchantment arrow and her... Uh, Hawkshot as it is, and not to mention, not to mention a Mumu. A Mumu has an AOE ult which can stun five men, and so if you do it really correctly, that can really turn the uh, turn the tide of the red side. Along with blue side, um, I do see very good engage from that too. The the def uh, the defense of that is the checks, and one thing I'm really wondering is the idea that will this. Will this Jax be able to pick up the pace and be able to like lead, uh, lead the front line? Like I said, to lead the front line to dive right in for that team fight with Udyr coming right in, Karthi using that ult, Nautilus diving right in, and Tristana finishing up cleaning that with her with their uh, with their damage as it does. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, I think you're right. The Jax really needs to be the one accelerating on this early game. My concern, and maybe you don't have the same concern, is with Tristana being that primary marksman that Da Burgundy has picked up here in game number one. We talked about the amount of CC and now frontline that Hail of Spades has drafted with Orn, Hecram, and Amumu. Tristana is not really known as one of those frontline shredders, right? Doesn't have that level of damage just to cut through this frontline. And so, like, are you worried at all about, like, the DA Burgundy's marksman choice here? Like, because Tristana kind of has to dive in and get Asher to Leah, feels like, in a fight. But Hail of Spades is going to have quite the stonewall in their frontline. Mm, like I said before, it's... I just call this, I call this a proof of insurance. Uh, the proof of insurance is that if Tristana is safely and farm, uh, safely and, like I said, comfortably farming as it is, and she's keeping up with her, far, uh, she came up with the CS pace along with Ash and Amumu, Ooh. that... Is this a Tristana mid? Are, are they taking this into the Talia matchup? Hmm. 
So this actually might be a Karthus, Karthus Nautilus? Yeah. Which, like I no, said... But now you have so much scaling. You have Udyr, Tristana, and Karthus, who only later game items. Even Jax really excels at two and three items. So what's your early game plan? Like, are you just trying to stonewall and farm? Because, I mean, I in think Bill of is happy to be doing that too. In that case, the whole game the whole game plan changes then. If it's Tristana mid, then that's definitely going to be a mid-jungle synergy right there. But not to mention, there's also Hecarim, Hecarim on the spot on red side too, Halo Spades. Really picking a really safe jungler uh, pick right there because Hecarim with movement speed, Uder with movement speed, it determines on who's going to race first to get that first blood, not going to lie. Yeah, it absolutely is. I mean, and you named that mid-jungle synergy. My eyes are going to be on Z Wallace in the mid lane. This is a master tier 187 LP mid laner that we have for DA Burgundy. This is the player you need to be watching here on the side of DA Burgundy if they're going to be taking this game one. It's going to be this early game Tristana pick. I expect him to actually go Hail of Blades into Hail of Spades because that can give so much early damage potential. But that's going to be the player you need to watch because, as you said, that 2v2, they can sprint at each other with some ghosts. And that's going to make a big difference in this early game to really try to accelerate game one. Where are you putting your money in game one, you think, Juicy? Well, like it's, well, it's anybody's game. Any okay. Anybody who even knows that a mass tier versus like a bunch of Platinums, mass a mass tier player would obviously single-handedly carry out a duel and win that only a duel i don't know about team fight a team fight could really uh, could be could vary at any result so if zwola somehow managed to uh face check into a bush and just the whole team was right there could possibly end with a shutdown sure that could possibly turn a little bit tight in the red team's favor it all depends on what Tristana has to offer the i mean not Tristana, the the player who plays to trust Tristana as well as has to offer and i think that this is going to be something that uh, as well as is going to be rely reliable upon uh, since, you know, higher higher rank basically shows that you need to show that you have a reputation to hold. <laughs> yeah, I'll add, there absolutely is a reputation to uphold for sure, Juicy. And we're going to be finding out just on the other side of a short spectator delay who is going to be taking game number one. The channel points could go either way as well. Juicy is on the same page there. Dionza Burgundy, Hail of Spades matching up in this best of three of the Targon division. Get your channel points in as we take a short break. And on the other side, we'll be getting in game number one here of the playoffs between Dionza Burgundy and Hail of Spades. See you in a moment.
We are on to the rift for game number one here of the Targon playoffs in the loser's bracket. The winner goes on to the semifinals. The loser goes home. This is game number one this evening between Dionza Burgundy and Hail of Spades. This is Llama alongside Juicy, and we are on to the rift. Um, I see there's a little bit of one invade here. Uh, apparently, like I said, uh, the CC itself, the one shot, the level one, uh, level one CC, uh, with the whole team that one person steps forward recklessly, they're gonna get hit and get first blood real early. But knowing, knowing the whole team itself, that they know, oh, okay, they're CC, they probably don't want to push forward on that. Oh, looks like hit goes like, oh, I'm just getting a little bit of information here, level one, it seems. Okay, but like I said, not, I'm not like clashing yet. I do like it. Uh, just a little more safer side. They obviously, um, in my opinion, though, I would say as a, uh, don't forgive me. I am, uh, I am very low elo. So in this case, I don't know very much like the difference between like putting that ward and such. But I do believe that if you're gonna put wards on all, you need to put wards early, early, so that you can actually put uh, enable have vision in case for those kind of invade uh, invasions and such. Yeah, no, that's that's exactly I think the thinking there. You're spot on with that. I mean, it definitely is oh about my. trying to see if they're gonna cross early. But oh my! I'm already. Alpharis, I don't know if Pog wasn't in lane on time, but Alpharis getting absolutely harassed level one. Burning out the heal already. I mean, Olhas, we said that this Nautilus was going to be going to engage, and look at that level one trade pop. -up. Even worse, when Ash already wasted a heal and her two potions. So that means there are not going to be enough potions for her to, uh, once they get caught once more, this Ash is going to have to flash uh, to go for a little more safer route. But in the end, that's wasting two similar spells if she even flashes. Yeah, and that's the early aggression that this squad wants to be getting down onto Hail of Spades. Four players on this squad all went biscuits in their runes. And so they're trying to just survive through this early game and want to scale up themselves. So really playing very, very safe here early on. Um, and so both junglers opting to go for a full clear, but Udyr's going to be the first one here to crap pop the bot side. As I say that, Soup Duck, they're not going bot side at all. They're trying to gank top. Don might be in trouble. This is going to be a level three now from Dawn. They might be looking to try to kill Mommy Road ahead of time. Soup Dog now is going to go in. Might be able to get oh. Colorado attack. Should be the first blood, and it will be Hail of Spades getting the first kill in this series. Typical, typical, uh, typical jungle, uh, jungle, jungle gink as it is. To once you go level two as Heck Room, you just need to dive right in. But looking at his level three, I'm assuming they're leveled up at this point. But yeah. Yeah. Speaking of going right in, Z Wool is in the mid lane, going to get a good chunk on the Lunar. So now. Yeah, like you said, typical jungle. This is where you start saying jungle gap, you know. I mean, great first early move out onto the map. But udyr has been happy to just farm on up. So let's see if that CS advantage makes any difference here. Um, And I'm, and we saw, and we, as we saw with the Tristana pushing up as it is, that uh, it's very necessary. It's actually very necessary for the push up. Because in case like these, oh, like this, for example. Yeah. I mean, Oha just unfeared, just wants to run on in four members from this squad, Deonza Burgundy, just walking on into the enemy jungle. They knew Sue Duck was going to be behind on their clear because they ganked top. So now Pogs is hovering around the area. Smite's available for both of these junglers. Might just be a Smite fight. Oh, it is going to go over to Till Stars, but now Pog is going to go in, wants to try to get something, but Sue Duck now in trouble. No way out of there. The Ignite mm -hmm. is going to fall. Two kills traded on back, and Burgundy right back into this game. And Z Wolves wants to be part of some action mid lane as well, but. A great invade that was not respected from Hail of Spades and two kills go down for that cause. And like I said, no damage, no damage from uh no damage from the red side because like I said, it's they are a scalar team comp. So they should not be in fighting this at all. If they know they're gonna invade like that, they should just let them be. Uh let Uder be and take that blue uh so that way next time when they do manage to stay uh farm safely, they could just come back. But they said they've got a little reckless. Speaking about recklessness, Mommy Roden in the top lane trying to smack on down this Jax, but recklessness is tempered, but Z-Wall is third time jumping on now. He's going to pull the exhaust out of Lunar, but being out of mana means there might, not, might be no play anymore. Wave's going to come on into them, but Pog just sit in the area. Does land his vantage <laughs> toss, but it's only level two. z Wolves is forced oh, no? to run. This Pog's going to get a solo kill. Dawn flashes away top, and everybody lives now oh flash oh. forward as i say that mommy wrote it picks up a second kill onto dawn zero with Omni. okay that's actually good for orn proof of insurance like i said before he needs to be a front line so therefore if he's gonna go like that he's gonna have to go ahead and since now he is ahead of two zero he's gonna be way tankier for him to be able to push forward and like i said t uh, help out the team uh help out the team with her with his own orn ult 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is such a massive ultimate to have at these team fights. And granted, you know, this is the person that you said in pregame, you were looking at this Jax to be the primary initiator to go in and have the team follow up from Burgundy. But now at zero and two, Jax is going to be set quite a bit behind now from being that team fight presence that they need to be. And so I'm liking the front line starting to build up here, but with the pressure top side, it's going to be responded to with the dragon on the bot lane. I mean, O2 is kind of for Jax is okay, but uh, like I said before, Orn is just pretty much uh, early game damage at itself. But once Jax get ahead, uh, once Jax get ahead, gets ahead of the CS, and like I said, gets his items that he need, uh, gets the necessary items that he needs to get, then Jax will be as tanky as people will say that they say they are. He is. Yes, absolutely. But it's still a ways from there. Mommy Rodin is up a level advantage now. Don trying to get this wave under tower, but Mommy and I might just pull the trigger with the ultimate right now. We'll see it. Here comes a call of the Forge God looking for the knockup. Don going to jump out and Mommy Rodin doesn't land it. A couple more autos might do it. Bella's no. breath and auto will oh. shut them down, but now Don is ticked to level six. The 1v1 is still looking like it's going to be in favor of Hail of Spades, but Don with a sliver of health slips on out of there like a soapy Dawn dish detergent and is going to be able to survive for another day. Okay, um, I'm just gonna say this Jax is actually not doing a good choice of just going dive right on Orn because I know that in your mind, you want to, since you are pretty tilted after Owen, until you want to be able to get that shut down. Uh, but in the end, you gotta wait for Udir because numbers really matter too in an early game because once you get ahead, once you get ahead and on to they basically are going to play safer. They're not going to just go for any kind of reckless enga engagements unless they know they have better, like, for example, Orn has, what is it called, Kindle Fire and the Chain, ve chain Vest, yep. right? So this is mainly going for um, Sunfire. Yeah, and which is so much more team fighting power, right? Like, in exactly. The one release, like, and and the, there's a longsword on the other side. Like, there's nothing Don can do. Exactly, which is why I think that Jack should have played uh, safer until Uder comes, which is right now. Yeah, now it's going to be a 2v2. Like you said, when the jungler's here, you can look to fight, but now Suit Duck is going to be able to be top as well. But in the 2v2, I don't think you win this Hail of Spades. Now the Ghost Forward is going to be there. This is so what Uder you wins said. Us. They're going to be running Uder back and forth under there tower. The ultimate even to come out from the Karthus means more fights are going to come through. But now Z Wolves wants to kill Lunar. Doesn't have another jump quite yet, but take a look. This is moving into the jungle. Once again, Z-Wolves in a little bit of trouble, but still, till stars fall. Once again on the Lunar, flash Ooh. over the wall, but Z-Wolves takes the blast cone the other way. Hogs is going to flash on forward, use the oh, ignite, yeah. and they will be getting the kill credit. A little bit of overextension uh -oh. comes uh -oh. out. Uh -oh. Don wants to turn it on back. One kill now traded. They get their revenge and their first kill of the game, and now they need to fight their way out of here. Pogs is going to be the next target, but yep. is not going to fall. It will be Don getting revenge for the team, but then dying themselves. I especially like the uh, I especially like the attempt for Tristana. Like Tristana, I like I said, Master Tier just wanted to just limit test uh, the the skill of the Talia as herself. And although it got shortened out by uh, Mumu, the support as of this, it's really like again, really good job on trying to make sure the Talia goes low as it is. And along with Orn, he was trying to trying to help out the Talia to be a little more safer, but ends up getting hit by the Jax. And like I said, now the Jax is actually getting a little uh, getting catching up ahead uh, with the damage and the and the armor itself. Yeah, and, and these are the items that they needed to, right? Jax really needed to get some more gold in their pocket. And at least the kill does provide that. Um, but these objectives already, I mean, Dionza Burgundy showing that they have some of this macro objective control, have four members at this Rift Herald too. So both the first dragon and now this first Herald are going to be both claimed by Burgundy. So doing a good job in the macro department. Hmm. Okay, I'm just, I'm just, I was making sure he, I was also hoping that Nautilus would actually go for a little and engage. Knowing he's just going to go a little bit forward, but no, never mind. I'm kind of surprised because uh, Nautilus is spending so much time up here that the bot lane here of Hail of Spades is not engaging. Pox might be looking for something, but there is a big chain of Crystal Arrow. It is spotted out though. Wow, yeah. Johan Ger being able to play very safely here. Just stay away from these enemy champions while Nautilus was moving around the map. And this Karthus, I mean... We're talking about scaling. You're two and zero as a Karthus early on. You're happy exactly. to just follow a farm. Yeah, like I said, being a little more passive just to make sure and your Karthus ult is just gonna be 
I don't remember. I actually don't know the. I remember Carthus all being the longest cooldown as it is. One of the longest cooldowns. Yeah. So what is it? What is it? seconds. Like it's right. Two and a half minutes. So he obviously is just gonna try to be a passive until the oh. next team fight. So where you can actually push it in. Yeah. But here's oh, the there four members now collapsing from Hail of Spades. They want to get both of these kills right away. Lunar Ooh. picks up first. Johan playing safely and has their own Requiem available now. But with this dragon coming up in just a matter of seconds, this might be traded back from Hail of Spades. That Nautil that I like how Nautilus uh basically blocked the entire oh Oh my gosh, Dawn gets the solo kill under tower, uses the flash for it and does trade it back. Now Z Wolf, this was that master tier ADC that your team relied on forced to flash away is very low. Lunar looking to try to get the solo oh. kill with the support of Soup Duck. Z Wolf is still staying alive for just a moment, but now he's gonna go on a killing spree with their third uh -oh. kill. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh oh, but look at this. Here comes Nautilus to flash forward. It's gonna be responded Ooh. to. Blood thirsty, but is able to walk on out of there with the oh, flash. Okay. Now pings onto the dragon. Hellstar's Fall wants to push up. Pogs is not level 6, critically for this fight. You do not have the Curse of the Sad Mummy. It makes your team fighting harder. The Ghost is going to come through. Here's the Wreck. We have teleport now from Orn, but they don't have the ultimate. When they join this fight, Mommy is still going to be looking for the fight, and the Dragon is low. The rest of the team is focusing that, but the teleport into the pit for traded. Mommy is forced to run, and now Tillstar's Fall wants to push forward. Z Woolis has rejoined and wants to jump on forward with the rocket jump. Forced all five members away from Hail of Spades, the Anza Burgundy with a proper response takes the dragon, but no members fall. And as I always see, and I always love, will always love this item, but not this, not this new, not this new version item as I, as people always love, not love anymore, but uh, the old good old static shift on Tristana. Oh, yeah. I absolutely love that. Okay, I was gonna say, I absolutely love this set of shiv on Tristana. Oh my gosh. We also love kills on Tristana, but it is gonna be Udyr slurping that one up. Yeah. I mean, but look at what that static shiv was able to do with the Rift Herald dropped as well. Just all of a sudden the tower's gone 12 and a half minutes. Pog's still level five versus a level nine Tristana. Amumu, you gotta get level six, man. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah, I, as much as I see, oh, now he had level six, but um, there it is. as much as I wanna see it though, that was. I like how they're going a little more engaged on, on to whoever seems a little more squishy because if I, as far as I'm seeing, two out of the five are very like squishy. They're not like they're actually not armor based. Unlike Uder, who's very tanky himself, he's not like Jax. There, where Jax can just basically uh, use all and uh, armor up a li little bit with his MP and uh, not MP, MR and AR. Armor reduction and magic reduction in that case, and not to mention Nautilus as a support. He's just, he's just tanky as it is, because he's just gonna guard wherever he comes this way. Basically, uses Q and just CC everybody. So this is a matter of point that who's gonna be targeted at this stage, because now with like this, it's post level six, and now I'm gonna see some fight right here. Yeah, Mommy wrote it is going to team up with Lunar to get a kill. 100 to nearly zero. Dawn falls down. And now in the bot lane, Z-Wolves trying to pick up that side lane. Chris the Sad Mummy and the Igniter used from Pog. Z-Wolves trying to trade it back on the Alpharis. Oh, tick, tick, boom goes the explosion there. Traded on back one for one at the end. Buster Shot was able to pick up that kill. And not gonna lie, if if, if Ash knew any better, she would have just backed off and let Amumu take the kill because yeah. Amumu is very important, N nonetheless. As even as a support, his damage scaling is very, very like OP. Oh, oh, Haas is in a little bit of trouble. He's gonna get uh -oh. knocked up. He's gonna try to run, but there's no support for you, Nautilus. This support coming in for Dionzo Burgundy as their substitute, not having the best early game in game number one. Yeah, especially like I said, um, there's really no point if you know any objectives that's any objective that's coming up, which is basically so far as they see the closest it is the Hextech Drake, uh, which is the which to be Hextech Soul, and as far as I'm concerned, I believe Hextech Soul is the attack speed of it. Yeah, that's gonna give um, yep, some attack speed also chains it if you get the soul. Um, I think it's so kind of like, so basically it's basically it's static shift 2.0. Yeah. <laughs> but, Pretty um, much, it's just more static shift. Which like some more static shift with your static shift, but yeah, um, can you also get a side of static shift to go with that here? And I mean, the Unza Burgundy's doing well with having two dragons to their names. This might be their uh, whole team static shift, but I mean, also you have the hex gates, which I think is another massive part 
of this right. map. It just gives the rotation so much more viability. Oh. Speaking Ooh. of that, the picks are still just oh. fine. Enchanted Crystal Arrow from downtown lands, and that's going to be the fight. Now four members have a collapse from Hail of Spades, and they want to knock down every single member of Yonza Bergen D2 for zero off the back of an amazing Enchanted Crystal Arrow from downtown. This is going to secure them their first objective of the game with Shirley starting to go down lower by the side of Hail of Spades. You see what I mean by da you, you see what I mean by damage scaling though, as I mentioned, because now you saw how Nautilus was able to uh, counter out that Mumu's Q right there. But even so, that CC is between Hecarim <laughs> and um, uh, Mumu and oh, there's a Herald, and I believe it was Orn. He not uh, Orn just ran out there and head first, head butted right under the Nautilus, and. Yeah, just so much crowd control. Yeah. Like it was insane the hundred to zero layering that they had in the crowd control department, and they tried to cross map just a little bit. I mean, they knew they couldn't take the ripped herald, so Dionza wanted to do something, but Till Stars Fall is going to be in trouble. They use their ghost and are going to be able to just walk on out of there. I mean, that's the tankiness, I guess, when you don't have the crowd control with you, that makes sticking even that much more challenging. So Udia runs in. Takes a couple camps and escapes, so a good little cross map there. Gratefully did not fall for it. Uh, I mean, like I mentioned before, n it's, uh, nothing happens to Udir. He's very safe, especially with Jax. Uh, the armor the armor scaling between Jax and Udir is very different, but also very similar when it comes to uh, the damage scaling too. Because I believe Udir is the one... No, actually. Actually, I think they're very equal, right? Jax's yeah. Jax's damage scaling and Uder's damage scaling are very equal to each other, right? Because they're both bruisers. They're also tanks as as they are. Mm -hmm. And and they're probably gonna go for some of that split itemization, as I expect to see some tankier items getting built too. Exactly. So I'm I'm actually curious if, if Uder and Jax is actually what I think they're gonna go. They're actually gonna go for the uh, double in dive actually with the with yeah. the uh, with the what you call it that blue the blue smite as it is oh there's the engage from dawn that you wanted to see oh. it's going to be followed up now from the rest of the members jumping forward early from tristana is going to be exhausted they do get the first kill already dionza burgundy seems to be winning this fight five versus two members left z wolves maybe a little bit too far flashes forward aggressively a couple autos oh forest is still alive for just a moment but the requiem is going to take the remaining kills five members slain from Hail of Spades and Dionza Burgundy only loses one. And there it is, a Karthus with a cleanup ult. That's why I like Karthus as a uh, as a bot laner or pretty much as a mid. And especially if he's passive enough that once you get good at him, all you do is just stay back, relax, and just press R all day. <laughs> yeah, because look at all the people that were on top of the fight there. Like you have. A Nautilus, you have a Jax, you have an Udyr. Like, they're all going to be in the fight. As you said, Carthage just gets to hang out, throw some space skittles from the back line, and then when the members get low enough, press that one key on your keyboard next to T, and then the rest of the players just go boom. And from what I see from based on the based on the awareness of the whole red size team comp here, I think that... Hmm, I think that the people who are... The capable of basically carrying this game is basically has to be Orn and Ash. Mumu also, but Mumu's gonna have to be playing a little more safer, and then that way he could just jump right in and ooh. Lunar using that ultimate defensively here. The Weaver's Walls can keep them safe. Yeah, you're right. About, like that, that's the carries, but like Hecarim can also be one of those carry threats, but they just need more damage, more items as well, if they're gonna be doing significant damage. Actually, but, like, you went Triforce, so. Yeah, when does this red side team come online? Actually, I feel like Triforce is good for Hecarim uh, as it is because he do require to be very fast along with his movement speed also. The only thing I feel like then only needs to be settled is Mumu during those skill shots in. So if Mumu actually gets it in and uses his ult, especially if he does a 5-man ult, then that'll give the that'll give the red, uh, the red sides their favor. Yeah, I mean, but 5v5 still seems so challenging when you have things like this, which is why I oh, no. the long-range ultimate under tower z -Wolves goes, picks up a kill before they fall, but another snipe. I mean, those are the picks that I want to see the red team playing for. When Alpharis is able to get these side lane chokes and grab one target, the team seems to be doing way better. And, I mean, Alpharis has landed some of these arrows. That's what I'm saying. That's the that's the care itself is Hecarim and Ash because if Ash actually throws uh successfully her enchanted crystals arrows, then that basically is gonna be hurt uh hurtful because 
Uh, I believe it's eight seconds of CC. So once you get uh, once you get stuck with that eight seconds, then oh it gives you enough time to actually get a kill. Ooh. Yeah, you might have crowd control, but the other team's got damage, and their wallets are a little bit thicker now, with nearly a five thousand gold advantage. And Baron on the map just twenty seconds after twenty minutes. This is going to be five members now collapsing. Yonza Burgundy only needed the one pick to make this play happen, but here come the rest of Hail of Spades. They want to try to contest this objective. No, they're not. They're just going to give up the Baron for free. Boo, boo, no balls. Literally, they're everyone. Gone. Oh, but if we're talking about who's got the balls, it's going to be the Tristana with the balls and the bombs. Oh, no, Picking up his own he's hill force to run now. Is going to get traded on back, but the purple worm is slain by Dionza Burgundy. I was I was gonna say uh I was gonna say the reason why we always say no balls is because everyone everyone knows that if you would just want to like try to make make the greatest plays ever like for, you always go for Baron steals. I do feel like though in legitimacy this would have been a good Baron steal because uh Hecker actually he doesn't have ult but Orn has ult he could basically TP there and just basically try to steal that all the cost for maybe wasting his ult or maybe wasting his life. I think the safer pick was just wasting your ult for now because ult cooldowns are much. All cooldowns are much uh, safer than just getting a kill for the other team. Yeah, because this also creates such a powerful power play for Dionza Burgundy. They already have the gold advantage, and that's only getting larger now. Their soul as well is in 90 seconds if they're going to be able to group up and play around that. And so now it's kind of do or die. Like, you did it 50-50 the Baron, so we're going to try to 50-50 the soul. That seems like what we see the red side going for, but Hail of Spades is at such a major disadvantage. Not even two items yet completed on Hecarim, not even two items on Ash. I just don't think you have the damage to make it happen, but they still want to try to make a play. Ooh! And it is going to be going in once again, getting the lockdown. Mommy wrote it in the back end. First kill is going to go to Hail of Spades. This might be their fight, but Donna's in the back line. Z Wolves is mopping up everyone on the rift. And now Mommy Rodin is forced to run away, but the only member left standing is this little Lorne and a double kill, five members slain. Requiem wasn't even used, but does it even matter? The minions are moving into the base, and this might just be GG right here. Um I'm sorry to I'm sorry to say, but um Oh my god, I'm sorry, Lunar, but I kind of think you threw you threw your ult because you kind of blocked you kind of blocked your own teammates from uh, uh advancing back to the tower which kind of stopped uh, kind of stopped the uh kind of stopped the engaging for the blue side and that gives them a little more advantage for Udyr and Jax to dive right in yeah they're trying to hold the nexus but a couple last auto attacks uh. will do it and game number 1 is going to be claimed by Dionza Burgundy here in this best of 3 series it was a close game but uh, I do believe the I do believe the only reason why they uh, the blue side won that game is due to the fact that it was the D divers of Jax Udir and the clean look at that the cleanup of Karthus. Karthus yeah. is Karthus, although he has less damage than less of Tristana because the Tristana is mostly like just staying alive, but throwing those throwing those engages and duels against Tristana and such and actually winning those a little bit. But in, back and forth, back and forth as it is. But the, it's the Karthus. The Karthus is what was winning them in games. And I do believe, I don't, I don't believe it's just uh, Karthus dip. I believe it's an ADC diff. So mm. if maybe in this chance, maybe if there Are is you the Tristana diff or just like the actual like ADC role. Because why ADC not both? In in game one, yeah. Why yeah. not both? That's true. That's fair. So I do believe it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit of a hectic start for uh for the red side, but uh I'm yeah, assuming with David. They also it, first picked the Carthus, right? Like that was a B one pick from Dion. Oh yeah, Dolphin, that's right. Right? Like, right. They picked that so early on in the draft, took it bot lane, and then we're like, all right, cool. Like let's just pick three melee champs to go around it. And then once they came online, it didn't matter that they were, you know, at a little bit I, of disadvantage shop lane. They just scale up. I'm just gonna say this, just so we can finish a little, a little bit. I'm sure we're gonna take a break here too. But um, I think they underestimated the Karthus pick because they assumed it's like, okay, let's just see what this what this guy can do with Karthus, and they realized about the Tristana uh, being a little more damage scaling on AD, not just AP, but AD. That's gonna hurt a lot. So that's why they kind of underestimated the whole concept of damage. Yeah. And I think that now this game, since it's game two, they have a chance to come back for a one-one. But if so, I think that the red side, which is Halo Spades. Have a chance to see. Okay, maybe we gotta un we gotta respect the we gotta respect the damage, and maybe so we gotta pick some. Uh, we gotta pick our damages of our own. 
Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. They seem to get into trouble once they locked in too much crowd control and not enough damage because they got some of those key picks in the mid game. We saw that, right, with those 2v2 plays mid where the downtown Ash Arrow locked them up long enough to like chain CC them to death. But once you have four damage threats on the enemy squad just sprinting at you, yeah, your CC is useless at that point, you know? So you're right. I mean, we'll have to see here. We're going to take just a short break as we get set up for game number two. And then we're going to have to see if the sides have swapped now. And will Hail of Spades be able to hang on to their playoff spots? Or will DA Burgundy push us to a quick 2-0 and advance to semifinals? We'll have to see in just a moment. See where you're at. As we got reset for the second match, we have the sides of the Rift swapping. Hail of Spades is going to be on the blue side now after they took that game one loss to D8 Burgundy. And now with these picks and bans coming through, we're seeing the Karthus look like it's going to be hovered and taken away from D8 Burgundy. They picked that early on. And I mean, you called it out there, Juicy. This was a problem for the side of Hail of Spades in game number one. I... I called the Karthus, but I didn't I, I, like. I underestimated how good the Karthus was. I do like the effort on Hail of Spades during the CC comp itself. That you saw, you actually saw here, folks. That comp, that comp was actually okay to play with. Maybe not in an environment where if you were positioning uh, correctly, because I saw the Hecarim, he was very positioning badly. Not his fault, but he was positioned badly to where he could have just died right in on a on a on a team fight itself. But Umumu did so much to actually carry in like that, and I think I feel like Umumu deserves a pat in the back for at least going in for those fights. But in early game though, I feel like that got a little bit reckless. So I feel like Halo plays need to like now learn how to be a little more passive, not just take any chances a little bit. Oh, but looks like you're going for the move again. Yeah, Halo Spades had that in game number one. They picked on the red side, and now they like it. But critically, the Melio is open now. Juicy, this is really scary. Halo Spades banned it in game number one. Already it's getting hovered now from DA Burgundy. I mean, they might just go back to locking this in. It's like the perfect Amumu counter, and it is going to be selected. So Halo Spades dropped two of their bans with Emilio and the LeBlanc in order to ban away the Carthus Nunia from game one. No, please but... don't go Ash. As much as I like the Ash, but oh. DA Burgundy, don't go Ash. If I were to pick, please go Philios. Oh. Yeah, it is going to be Ash going with that Melio in the bot lane, I presume. I mean, you have the range strength. You have some of the on-hit damage as well that Melio provides. You have some utility. So, yeah, I mean, Dia Burgundy seems to counter that Amumu pretty cri critically here. Maybe it's going to be like the Amumu jungle flex. Like, maybe there's a world where you just have Halo Spades take that jungle instead and give it to Soup Duck. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, oh, with this is perfect. This is perfect. That's okay. two bot lane now, right? That's the level 16 fight that they want to go for. Uh, this is a good matchup, especially as Misfortune going a little more lethality, also. Or you can literally go 80, but no, no, nevertheless, no matter what, Misfortune's damage basically it hurts worse than Ash. So, Misfortune is a great pick, oh. especially if you're just going for a team fight. Yes, 
oh yes please i want you to pick dino this is a, this is the wow. trip this is what i love about the trinity of damage okay uh especially if you have yo okay so this is coming from a certain game i played long long time ago dino and yone do you combine those together to bring Swing towards anybody with even as five man ult from Dino, and next thing you know, you have the Yoni slicing right through. Uh, especially that damage for Yoni scaling of 80, it hurts a lot. And next thing you know, you have Misfortune ult with it, and then the movement CC as it is. So, I don't want to wow. see uh, what they're gonna pick. Woo, Rex side too. But the damage itself is, I like how they're going, like I said, they're kind of following the damage, and hopefully, they're gonna try to win that fight through uh, Dino, maybe some sort, but. As far as I see from Milio and Ash, this is a disengage of CC and re-engage uh, re of CC for Ash. So this is going to be yeah. D and Burgundy's side of like they want to like they're they're going for home, but it seems like Halo Space has the advantage of home side technically. Yeah, and Spades has a massive AOE so far drafted with these three champions. So DA Burgundy might need to try to pivot a little bit here by playing more into a split push. Because if you see that Halo Spades is drafting these massive AOE ultimates, the way to counter that kind of composition is by playing for split push. If you can play two or three lanes at the same time, you know, thinking things like Yorick, Nasus, you know, champions Fiora that can just stay in the side lane oh, and you don't have to interact that gives this Halo Spades comp no wombo to combo, you know? So we'll exactly. have to see now if DA Burgundy, with these last couple of picks on their side, is going to be able to pivot away from a team fight because Halo Spades is just going for that 5v5 lockdown. Yone is available as an option. The Diana Yasso is a very consistent combo as well. Right. So, yeah, Halo Spades, I think, is going to go all in for the combo. And DA Burgundy now has to lock in something here on R4. And Cassiopeia, Cassiopeia. Okay. as a counter engage, is going to be the choice for the middle. Okay, I like the Cassiopeia, especially if you like to be Jensen itself and just be traditional. Uh, another thing I like about Cassiopeia, though, is, is, the, um, is her poison, I'm assuming, right? She has sure. also has poison, that basically, as it is, yeah. including her ult. And her ult is very important because if you dive right in, that fight itself is going to hurt oh. a lot. Oh, okay, that's this... a Mooma Jungle. Yeah, that's this is the Mooma Jungle Flex. No, nope, it's yeah, a yeah, great Milio yeah, counter. Yeah. It is juicy. Good. Hail of Spades did a little one two switcheroo here, baited out the Milio pick, and then picked the hard counter into it with Blitzcrank. I love Blitzcrank too, it's especially if you have, uh, I don't know her, his hitbox for a Q because. Every time I play against Blitzcrank and you basically played just a tip Q, that's going to hurt. Oh, 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 oh. My. Juicy, this is go big or go home for Halo of Spades. I mean, this is just 5v5 team fight. And look at all these hook targets. Literally anyone on DA Burgundy, if they get hooked in, they immediately die, right? Like, there is so little mobility from this Burgundy squad. Like, what do you even pick here if you're Burgundy for your top lane to counter this cannon now? Like... Mm -hmm. You gotta play. You know, wait, 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 you know what we're figuring out? Hopefully they hear me. No, no, please don't. Oh, I say, please, please pick Dar Darius because Darius oh. would be so good on the, on the cannon. But I can see the angle with Gragas, right? Because that gives so much separation in the fight. It works fine as another mage into cannon. It has the drunken rage to deny a little bit of that damage. But primarily, you have disengage option, which was something that was missing uh, from this Burgundy squad. So. I think Grog has kind of saved the draft a little bit, but I'm still worried for Burgundy in the second game if Halo of Spades can play around their 5v5 team fight. The only the only uh, problem with Halo of Spades' comp is I'm I'm not saying this I'm not saying it as a as a negativity, is the squishiness, it's the vulnerability of each champion. Because as you saw yes. how much damage they took uh, from Amumu, as you saw how much damage they took from each champion itself, no matter what, uh, the damage itself coming from uh, Hecarim, Ash. Uh, including Amumu, they hurt. They get hurt a lot. So, but with this, with the DA, with DA Burgundy's this comp as it is, they, it looks like they have no damage itself early game, anyways, until they get to mid game or late game, which means that this would be an HOS's um, advantage here. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look forward to see who wins this fight in terms of damage, because you need to win by one shot, to be honest. Yes, you absolutely do have to win by one shot. But I mean, if you look at Burgundy's side. Who's going to be able to survive the one shot, right? Like, if you land the Curse of the Sad Mummy into the bolt time... What was that? It's Milio. Milio's, Milio's old, like I said. Milio old will just yeah. cleanse everything else and just win that fight. But yeah, that they is... Can, they have to kite it, though, right? Because, exactly, yeah. Yeah, you're right. The 100 to 0, like, there's enough damage. It's more going to get it off before they're able to kite it out because 
Cassio and Ash both have some good peeling tools, but they're not very mobile inherently. Mm. Yeah, so I guess I prefer, is it a matter of positioning? So if no. by any chance Milio pulls up the perfect ult, like you can't, like as far as I'm seeing, you can't, you can't waste one second as Milio. But once you get, once you get CC on that too as Milio, so yes, it's still there. The R is still there for you to disengage and cleanse yourself. But if you just, if you, if you time it correctly, like any pro player would do, to instant cleanse as soon as you get CC'd, then that would be, that would be a great time management to basically save time and to create uh, better longer team fights and to save your teammates from you know getting hurt and whatnot especially Ash. Ash is very important in this fight along with uh, Gragas just dumps right in. <laughs> oh my gosh Gr especially I hate Gragas. Gragas is just dies right in uses barrel uh, old uh, a barrel ult and just shoot another barrel knock him one back into the barrel and then they die instantly so I'm like yeah, yeah. what is get what is what is Gragas' main weapon basically barrel just barrel just drop a barrel on their face and i mean maybe that's enough here um but yeah you know i mean again i'm looking at this uh mid jungle matchup especially with rek'sai i mean I, that was i think maybe picked into the idea of an amumu jungle but rek'sai is such a feast or famine champion from the jungle and this feels like the point of pressure that you need to shut down halo of spades early game because if they get to level six level seven eight around these dragon timers you have your ultimates available it's so challenging for DA Burgundy to take a 5v5 team fight, and Rek'Sai does not want to take 5v5 team fights. So it's going to be challenging, I think, for Burgundy if they're at parity around these fights to take them. But I mean, yeah, you said Gragas, you throw in some barrels on top of the heads of a hail of spades, and I mean, maybe you have some burst yourself. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm liking what we're seeing for game number two. Also, let's not confuse that with GP, guys. Uh, GP also throws barrels as it is, but it's not what you think it is. But Greg is also a alternate version of throwing barrels. But what I think about Greg is if you can basically do it correctly, uh, if you saw multiple street, I was if you saw multiple. There's, uh, no way. There's no way. They must not be in order. I know, I'm assuming so. But I was gonna say Melio <laughs> AD with Ash support. If by any chance that actually works on DA and Burgundy's side, no I wanna question way. it. I wanna question them in that matter. So I wanna see if that if this is what they it, it, if this is what they're intending to do. I mean, this is why I, I stopped for a second. The marksman for Burgundy is actually more confident playing the Melio. Like that's an option, I guess. If they switch, then I'm, I'm then I don't mind. But if, if this if this is the Melio ADC, then I'll be actually surprised if this actually goes well. If not, then we can assume that Melio is not ADC type, anyways, <laughs> as expected. Yeah, I mean, Ohas does have a four KDA in ten games on Melio, so I do expect to see that being the champion that's piloting this Melio. Um, maybe they're not in order. I didn't quite pay attention there, but uh, I mean, we'll have to see here. Um, the prediction is live for game number two, so get your channel points in on who is going to win the second game. Will DMs of Burgundy force us to uh, a quick 2-0 close it out, or is Halo Spades going to push this series to all three games? We're going to take a quick break, and on the other side of the spectator delay, we'll be seeing who wins game number two here of the Targon division, Style Esports, between DMs of Burgundy and Halo Spades. We'll see you in a moment.
It is time for game number two of the Targon Division Losers Bracket. Game number two between Dionza Burgundy and Hail of Spades. I am Llama alongside Juicy bringing you the action. We had a Juicy game number one. Hey, Juicy. <laughs> Using my names, that's that's funny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was it was really a close game. But even so, um, we saw a CC draft versus a heavily uh, frontliner in dive uh, draft. But even so, the in dive draft won that. But I want to see because uh, right now Halo Blades is now going for a AOE draft, so they're actually gonna go for AOE damages along with like uh, they are technically AOE draft, but Blitzcrank is just basically not counting as an AOE. His all is, but it's just basically his just him hooking someone. Yeah, and so um, we were had some questions around this bot lane as well. We thought it might have been Melio ADC, but it looks like just Ohas and Johan were just in different positions here. Um, so it is actually going to be um, the Ash as our uh, ADC and Melio at the support position. Okay, because I, I was gonna say they got us. They got us both in the beginning, huh? But, I yeah. know. I th I thought we might have seen something super spicy here, but uh, that is not going to be the case here. Oh, I just saw that yeah. right now. Oh. Yeah, I thought that might have been something, but uh, ultimately did not land. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, I'm seeing I'm seeing MF going the PTA. Oh, nice, nice, uh, nice bounce shot with that. But I see MF with the PTA, which in my opinion is great, but um. I still think that whatever item she's gonna build is uh, determining on what how uh, what build what item she's gonna build to make sure it completes with the PTA as well. Because PTA once you hit that third proc on that on that rune itself, it's gonna be a lot of damage. And if you pick like like for example, I personally pick Eclipse. Eclipse will be great for PTA. So if you hit that third hit, that's gonna hurt a lot. Especially if you're now going like forward for those team fights using the ult, one two three, and that's gonna be a shot once again. That wait. I was question asked about that. Does MS all counts as a with PTA stacks? I I didn't think it did. That's why I was kind of confused here because for press the attack, I thought you needed like the auto attacks, right? You have to hit an enemy with three consecutive basic attacks. So it is true, you right? Don't get it from your wave. Oh. oh, but Pog's gonna land a hook on the Johan. Forced a ghost away now. Will be able to just survive with that one summer spell being used. But Blitzcrank all of a sudden land a couple of hooks. Pretty important. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. I'm so sorry. Uh, another thing I want to bring up, uh, bring a point upon is uh, well, while picking MF, it's uh, I heard I heard about this one. I just looked up to a TikTok video about this one. M, oh, that was close. MF going overheal and bloodthirster for her strut passive. Oh, interesting. Because if I recall, uh, if you manage to go overheal and get a shield, if you overly heal yourself, then that strut doesn't really di disengage at all. Oh, Toaster's Fall is going to go into Lunar and force the Flash away. So a good gank now. But Soup Duck is going to respond to the bot lane. They know there's no Ghost, but Flash That's a first is available. Blood. That's a first blood right there. Oh, it is going to land with the Bandage Toss. And now Ohas is going to be in trouble too, but forced to Flash away. The second Bandage Toss is going to go wide. And Pogs does not have the Rocket Grab available. So just still one kill. But like you said, that's the first blood right there. Yep. Uh, like I said, going back to MF with the uh, whole like overheal and <laughs> uh, strut pass it too. I heard that even though it's it technically, oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Tilster's Fall is going to be in trouble now, too. There's Nether Kill going over. Hail, uh, Hail of Blades is off to a little bit of a strong advantage here in game number two. That perfect timing of both of them got knocked up by Rexa and by Blitzcrank. Oh my Same gosh. But, um, All right, yeah, but, talk uh, about this overheal. I think we got some time here. Yeah, okay. Uh, never mind. Uh, yeah, okay. Over overheal. Oh my goodness. No. They're no, really going to go fine. for the fights. Uh, but MF will overheal, especially go over the shield like this, over the over the shield of your max health bar as it is. It basically it counts as a shield, not as a health itself. So technically, your uh, strut does not basically get br uh, broken as, at all. So if oh. you actually go bloodthirster, uh, if you actually go bloodthirster with the overheal rune, then if you as you run away with your W, uh, you don't have to press W, but as you run away with your passive, it, you technically still move fast because it, because it counts. If you get damaged, your shield takes the damage for you instead of your health. Yeah, but so she doesn't have overheal and looks like she's going lethality. So neither of those things apply, but maybe something to theory craft in the next game here. Alfaro no, does get the first battle. No, it's based on the item. Oh, uh, wait, she just she didn't build overheal, right? She does not have overheal in her runes. Let me check real quick. Let me check real quick. Oh no. Is there any chance I can see that? Uh, oh, yeah. she didn't. Then oh my yeah. goodness. Okay, that's okay. But yeah, I I 
I saw that. I saw that with the. Uh, I saw that with the TikTok video I just saw, and it is confirmed. I checked it real good, and it is confirmed. When you get hit, when you hit a guy by any champion, any enemy champion, just when you get over over heal and getting bloodthirst as it is, yeah, you don't lose your passive. Wow. Well, we'll have to see if they do go for a little bit of lethality um, into maybe some healing in their build as well. But this fortune with that early Sterix is going to be able to poke out quite a bit here. And Ovahas now without the flash available, it's going to be a little bit more vulnerable. And Tillstar's Fall is going to be able to recognize this and is going to be pathing down for maybe a 3v2 gank. But a Moon Moon as well is in at least the zip code. This could get scary bot lane pretty quick. Uh, again, it all this depends on scary. Blitzcrank. Blitzcrank, come on, man. Oh, they do land onto the Ash, but Ash Tittle's Flash available. Pogs is going okay. low, but Starfall is going to be the first one to fall. Pogs at one auto. Oh, Blitzcrank! Is just go ahead and wobble on out of there. Double kill over to Alfaris. Four for zero right now is the scoreline here. Dionza Burgundy at a massive disadvantage early on in this game. Over 2,000 gold. Halo Spades is showing up in game two. Okay, they figure it out. They figure it out. Their best carry is the Ash, and therefore they're just gonna give you. They, they're just gonna give her that strong champion for damage. Oh, that cannon. Oh wow. But um, yeah, that Miss Emmet. Emmet, in terms of just being both vulnerable, but very strong in terms of aggressive and early game play. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this misfortune. Alphyrus had a good game Ooh. on the Ash with some of those arrows, but this game also is looking solid. Donald has a nice barrel. You said that's what Gragas does, but. Doesn't have enough damage, not enough mana to seal the deal now. No, I think I know. I think I know what he was trying to do. So, okay, I think that's. I think that. The, I think that uh, ult was intentional. But what I think what he was trying to do, he, he was just trying to ult Kennen towards the tower, where that tower range can actually hit him a little bit, and Gragas can just bump and stop him as as he go tries to engage for him. Oh, but look at Pogs trying to hex flash out of the bush. I don't know why you're doing that, buddy. Just hook. He's gonna get the knock up on first, and now pulled back in, stunned and locked up. Z Wolves is in trouble. Three members have collapsed, and a fifth kill now for Halo of Spades. I think he didn't want to waste that Q. And so I think that Q was just in case of insurance, so that if he does miss his the, uh, E, he could just Q right after. But I think he didn't want to Q first oh, or in like that. Now has level six and not even close. Ohas tries to knock them away, but gets oh. one back nonetheless. Johan Gur in trouble themselves is going to get locked up with that Curse of the Sad Mummy and Soup Duck now going on the tower, but they might have the damage to seal the deal. Lunar looking for a little bit of a Lunar Crescent, but that will not find anything. Oh, Alfaris just flashes forward. This is a completely different squad in game number two of, for Halo of Spades. I, like I said before, uh, like I said before, the... Halo Spades basically now knowing game two what they're or what uh DA Burgundy now capable of and so they're just gonna bring out their A game and they're gonna show they're gonna just see what they can manage to handle if they can do that once more then they're just gonna bring it out once again in game three if they had to stay win this game yeah I mean they still have to close out on this game and we did see even with some early advantages in game number one this was a squad that Deonza Burgundy was able to still scale it out and play the mid game very successfully. And there's still the need to execute in team fights for Halo Spades because that's really how your team functions here. But so far, this early game is off to a great start as they also secure that first strike. Okay, I just got a I just got a confirmation from a viewer. Uh, they say that it doesn't work like that with BT. Bloodthirster is kind of nerfed, so it does make sense the fact that Bloodthirster it did kind of now 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 got nerfed as it is. So it does it does technically doesn't really help that much anymore. So he they they, they basically just said it's just overheal. So, which I understand. Overheal as a ruin, it's basically very important. And so, oh. so is yeah. Lunar's gonna go with the ultimate. Flash oh. away from the bullets. Pogs is in the area. As is Soup Duck. The ultimate from Ash. Enchanted Crystal Arrow does land. Ohas is in the area, but not level 6. Oh my god. Go in. But now Flash responded. Tillstar's fall. Soup Duck forced to flash away. Ohas is here, but no members fall. Just a lot of flashes expended on both sides. Now that Herald dropped as well. In the okay, position. real quickly. I didn't think that Q actually would land. On the minion because that seems so far away for it not to catch. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was scary. I thought you know they cursed this had mummy up. A suit duck would have taken that for sure. Um, but now Alfaris is here, level eight to level five on Melio. Ultimate's available. Look at this damage. Oh, Haas able to retreat under their tower. The positioning there of the bullet time was not quite in the right angle. So again, able to just barely escape. Again, it's all reliant on the MF. Look at the MF right now, especially in nine, 10 minutes, 4-0. And this MF is gunning Yomus. And 
As far as I heard from Yomus, it's got buffs right there too. What is? I forgot what Yomus said when Tails off again. Uh, Yomus, the active? Yeah, Yomus yeah, active. It's, in... it's 45 second cooldown there, so definitely able to be used very soon. But maybe, Mommy Rudder wants to go Ooh! in. Trades flashes. Oh, uh, no, I'm in, I'm in the, the uh, stats. So 60 attack damage, 18 lethal, 15 ability haste, active rate step, gain 25% movement, and goes for 6 seconds, haunts again up to. This one, I'm actually confused about this one. I haven't really seen this side of Yomu's Ghost Bleed. Yeah, because it was super Gain... OP on release, but... but I, didn't get, I didn't get about the special shards thing. Get out this 100 special shards while moving. Yeah, so it. that's just like uh, ramping up movement speed as well by uh, traveling around. It's kind of like the old Shiv where like you build up to 100, and then once you have 100, you get the extra damage. Um, so that's basically how that ability works. Um, so... It does increase some of the move speed once they have it, um, and you get that lethality uh, kind of locked down um, after you deal damage. So it's you know it's much worse than it used to be. Oh my oh! god! No, he's just Pog Champ with that hook forcing the flash out. That was a midair melee that they just yoinked out of the sky. Living up to his living up to his name, getting the Pog hook onto that. But I love. Uh, like I said, you don't normally know what Blitzcrank is a Q like that, and you especially oh. Okay. Now it's like Blitzcrank's in my games now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's why I said I don't like Blitzcrank. It's, uh, I don't say the player, but Blitzcrank, his hook, you saw it was very out of range. <laughs> I hate this guy. <laughs> no, no, but the Blitz, you saw the Blitzcrank hook is very much out of range. You can see that, right? Then all of a sudden you get grabbed by that? That's so bull. Yeah, yeah, that like, oh man, I'd be so mad. They forced the flash out as well. Exactly. So that's why that's why when that hitbox on Blitzcrank's Q is so overpowered. I don't know. I, I I don't know about the range itself, but that's seemingly if you're especially if you're like depending on the environment that you're in, if you uh, are uphill and all that too, I think that's why. Then you pretty much get caught no matter what. So I think you have to be very respectful for Blitzcrank's Q unless you're in, unless you're a tank a bruiser of some sort like Cannon for example. Then, then you have every chance to fight him. But if not, then you might want to be careful because that Blitzcrank will just throw you in no matter what. Yeah, and I mean, this Pogs champ already has 6 of 7 KP in this game. So having a really good performance in game 2 for the squad and really enabling a lot of these picks early on. And seeing as, seeing as it is, look at this, 7-0 still. So I'm actually surprised at the fact that... Um, Taylor's plays are now keeping a clean, still a clean game in 13 minutes. No towers yet. They they got one Herald and they got one Drake per se. So I want to see this is going to be a clean game and towers and of kills to give this out the oh, perfect. Oh look game. at this! They were just standing still, so Rex I had no way to know. That was really great positioning there by just pressing S, not moving at all. Rex I walked right in front of them and they got a free kill for it. And the dragon on the back end. Really? Because I thought I saw, I saw. I thought that's. I thought from that corner that was actually viewable for Rek'Sai. I mean, they get the very last minute there, but oh, another hook from Pogs. This guy can't miss. However, oh, it does from Lunar. One point five million mastery points. Who? Just a little bit of a whiff there from the Moonfall. But now Soup Duck is going to be here to join. Oha's trying to fight out with the on her. Altharis is in trouble. Flash forward. Oh, but the missing. Bandage toss means that Altharis will fall for the first time this game. But Bup both G kills picked up by Super. Bup GG FF on Halo's place for losing, not getting their perfect game as it is. Yep. But um, go next. Just, <laughs> but um, just, just go next season. Let's just FF this season. But in case you didn't see, if you guys didn't see Lama, uh, you know when Blitzcrank pulled Cassiopeia, Diana tried to pull all but misses uh, on a whim. So I yeah. still halfway there, but um. As we saw, MF actually getting a little hit onto the Milio and all that. The Milio actually perfectly disengages with the ult, and that way that causes the Ash kind of like to survive a bit onto the MF, getting a kill, but at the same time, at the same time, lose it to both kills to Amumu. Yeah, I mean, Amumu is still doing pretty well now. 10 of 10 KP, 100% kill participation in 15 minutes. Z Wallers is going to be in trouble now. Mommy Rodin is going to be here too. They know that those the flash is back up for the Casio. 
Here comes the teleport. This is going to be a full on team fight. Suduck is in the area, but doesn't have their own ultimate. This is going to be a counter engage and a great oh. pickup onto Pogs. What was an amazing early game is starting to turn on its head. Suduck does not have their own ultimate available yet. A Momo? Turn a little bit more challenging, however, has not been spotted out yet. It's going to go <laughs> oh, that's now, smart. That's here, smart. Has their own ultimate available. Slicing Maelstrom could go in if they find the angle, but we also have the petrifying gaze. Z-Wool is able to fight their way out of this. It's going to let the Herald reset now. Alphyrus is also in the area. Okay. I, I, I totally understand what Moomoo was trying to do, and it, it was perfectly explainable. The fact that Milio is, was wide open there, and she's very squishy, would give a Moomoo the chance to kill her. Or him. Since he, I forgot he's a dude. It just seems very more comical as it is to have a support die instantly. They're like, what the heck, dude? Why, why am yeah. I dead? You know? Yeah, why are you going for me? But, oh, Pog's looking for another hook. Petrifying Gaze is available, but low mana. Oh, just Missed. sidestep. That's the master slithering away from there. I mean, it's, it's, it's like I said, dueling-wise, if you know you have faster re uh, reactions than others too, obviously Kazupia would dodge that Blitzkrieg ult. And that Blitzkrieg ult, uh, Blitzkrieg, now, Blitzkrieg ult, that Blitzkrieg hook. And if you saw that Blitzkrieg hook, it's straight as it is, which means that anyone with that, anyone with the master tier one that would see that and just jump to the side no matter what. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was just straight a, ahead. A slithery snake who doesn't have any boots available to that little tail, but still able to sidestep nonetheless. I mean, the champ doesn't have feet, but the player sure does. Okay, I'm seeing this right now as it is too. And okay, the fact that the fact that uh, Da Burgundy has are having a little of a hard time. The only thing I feel like is they're trying to save up for Cassiopeia for this game. It seems like that Cassiopeia is trying to stack up on farm and CS as it is with this plus train. Is also going to be the focus of all these fights now. Forced to use the flash. Oh, there's the bandage toss, but the team wasn't in position to take the continued fight. Uses the curse of the sad mummy as well. And Z Wolves without the flash, without the boots, without the life is going to fall again. So, like you said, DA really wants to play around this Cassiopeia, but looks like Halo Spades knows that as well. And so they are grouping up all their members and just keep punishing this snake in the mid lane. Oh, I wish they could. Have... Okay, this is what I call the G2, the G2 Herald. I want them to push all four of them like this since they are ahead with the Cassiopeia. That Master Tier is gone. So they're going to have to push all the way up to that base tower there. Please. Please. Go for the base tower. Go for the base they tower. Go to for another one. Crash in. No, don't back up. Come on. He's going to miss the hook, though. No, go for they're not going to get the hell in. But hey, two towers. Pretty good after that pick in the mid lane. Don Zero just trying to split in the top side. They're trying to stop the bleeding because the side of DA Burgundy knows that they are not stronger in team fights yet. So they just need to farm on the side lanes, and they're doing just that. 45 seconds until this third dragon is up, and the members from DA Burgundy are in this area. But I think it's a pretty hard team fight to take if you're DA Burgundy. And like I mentioned, and like how we all mentioned before, this is loser's bracket. So this is either go big, go home. I'm guessing that because of the game one, they try to test the limits and test the waters of DA and Burgundy. And now they know they just want to bring a little bit of A game for Halo Blades. And now look at this. They're actually creating a big gap. Uh, of 12 and 2 uh, kills, so 12 kills on blue side and 2 kills on the red side. However, there's 4k gold lead for the blue side, also along with 2 tower lead, uh, 1 hero as it is, and this getting is 1 snake victory. might be in the wrong zip code, buddy. You're gonna get silence knocked up. Master tier can't save you from the hook. This is gonna secure the sole point now for the blue side. Not only is it a gold lead, a kill lead, also a 3 dragon lead. For Halo Spades, and there, that's, and I'm, I'm just gonna say this, this actually cements their victory here. The fact that the fact that Halo Blade, uh, Halo, Halo Blades, Halo Spades here. Oh, Miss IQ. The fact that Halo Spades, uh, found, found their, found a win condition here, that they have, they have, they need to have power, they need to have damage, and without that, you need to have CC. I think they got that coming, and they kind of know what to do now. So they need to fit in with the D uh, CCs with that, along with damage. And this might be the perfect comp ever. So unless they get banned or whatnot too, I feel like if, they, if they're able to get the same draft as it is, they should pull another one like this. Yeah, because they were at enough of an advantage early on to take the team fights in a 5v5 fashion. 
And you notice that Don Zero isn't even trying to group with the team, right? You see that the squad of DA Burgundy, they know they can't take the 5v5, so they're trying to play three lanes, but the collapse is going to be too strong now. Don Zero in trouble, has flash available, no ultimate anymore, keeps the flash in their pocket. And again, nothing can be done here if you are DA Burgundy. So Deonza needs to just play the split lane. You see Rek'Sai taking the bot side already. Baron's getting started off again. I mean, this is Ohas trying to single-handedly catch some vision here, but Rek'Sai's nowhere in the area. Now the air is going to spot it out, but this is just going to be a Baron taking sub-21 minutes for Hail of Spades. Okay, okay, I see that. So in my opinion, though, with this game itself, that it's actually, they're actually going to go for... Um, so. This is something I've been looking for for with the uh, what blue what blue side is trying to do. They're actually going to go for power and damages in terms of the lane pressure that they're going to focus on the mid lane because all he do to win the game is basically focus on the mid tower as you see right there because all the waves have been pushing up right there to the middle and that's where usually you have every team fight you need to put wards out to provision especially what uh, what what intersects in both. Is the both objectives of Harold, uh, of Baron, and Elder Dragon, which I'm assuming is going to come up next, right after three minutes of this last Infernal Drake, that if the blue team gets it for Infernal Soul, that's why uh, that way when you push up that mid uh, mid lane tower, that base tower at the end right there for red side, that'll give them a sure victory, Halo of Space, sure victory for them to come across that, get the team fight going, win that, and then push up, uh, push up as it is. Yeah, absolutely. And meanwhile, it is still all just avoidance from Halo or from uh, Dionza Burgundy. They were able to secure a couple of towers after that Baron fell. But now uh -oh. when they have the Baron, they're going to uh -oh. force this flash on forward from Pogs. I don't think this is going to keep you alive for very long. The killing spree now for Lunar with this pocket pick one trick that they have. Oh, no. Nah, there it is. In. Knocked on her tower, but doesn't seem to matter. Is able to use the Hextech Proto Belt to escape even now. Tillstar's Fall wants to be able to take this fight. Has their own ultimate available. Said. This is going to be enough. Yes, you got the kill, but you're losing your base for it. Ohas not able to hold the base by themselves. Ash still pushing in the mid lane now. Four members are in your base. You got to do something about it, Dionza. Okay. Like I said, they're, keep, they're going to keep pushing on it. They have the Baron here. I don't know why they keep backing up. You have Baron, and you uh, you got a next wave here. So I'm, I'm I'm assuming with the MF ult, you can pretty much win that fight. So I don't know why you just back up for that when you can literally take one tower and then back off. Take take more out of the to your uh, Baron buff as it is. Yeah, with 90 seconds until the dragon and backing off now, it does give a lot of the pressure over now to the side of Dionza to reestablish in their own jungle and look for angles that they can push on forward here. So they are going to be able to get some of this vision. Ohas is in the area. It's going to clear out some of this established vision. And now with one minute until the soul, this feels like the point that Dionza Burgundy is going to need to try to force. I mean, at this point, too, that uh, at this point, I guess it, uh, this is actually makes a little more sense. But the reason why I said they could have pushed for a little more towers is because if you look right there, then if you look at the amount of waves that is being held for uh, the inhib that has been sh uh, taken down from bot side. Oh. Anyways, I was going to say, it looks like they're just going to disengage right there too. But if you look at the bot side right there too, the whole inhib wave is coming down right now. So if they push on towards the tower right there, and they only have one base tower. Oh, the Hex flash hook over onto Melio. Ohas has to use ult for themselves to stay alive. Oh they my god. Moment, but Lunar's on a rampage now. Kennen's not even at this fight, and the rest of DA Burgundy is forced to try to run away. Here's going to be the bullet time, but not going to be quite killing anyone yet. But Pog's going to land one other hook, and Jenica Tolero can buy a little bit of time, but Lunar's under the tower. It is going to fall, though, maybe a bit off more than they can chew, but now Sunda wants their turn to try to take this fight to themselves. Mommy Rota teleporting into the mid lane. Sutuk now in a 1v4 is going to use the Curse of the Sad Mummy and hooked on oh. over is the Cassiopeia, but they're going to use their own Petrified Gaze, pick up a kill. The Master Mechanics are on full display. Z Wool is now trying to chase out the rest of the team. Teleport comes in. This might be the fight that Burgundy needed. They are going to get another shutdown onto the Amumu, and now Pogs is going to follow themselves with Mommy Rodent forced to lick their wounds and run away. The soul has been avoided. The kills have come through, and DA Burgundy is not given up in this semifinal playoff. Oh man, they're really taking this seriously for go big or go home, and I really appreciate how they're just trying to fight to the life here. Uh, but overall, 
it was all due to the circumstances of the mid laner, the master tier player, Swoles. And especially he actually, if you saw right there to the side, he he knew that the, he knew that the MF uh, he knew that the MF and Blitzkrieg are right there. Uh, as they're just trying to take out the tower. So as she try to get as she gets caught right there, she immediately ulted to the side of MF, knowing that thinking she's gonna get hit, and then therefore Cassie Pio try to target her for a shutdown. That's smart. Yeah, no, that was really, really well played. Now that they have three items as well, Cassiopeia is at a critical mass. They have 10 items or 10 stacks of the Rod of Ages. They were able to stop the soul as well. But at Baron, in a minute, you have to do it again. And we talked about in the champion select here, Juicy, Dionza Burgundy is trying to fight into this massive 5v5 team fight that Hailed Spades has drafted. But here's the question that's self. Now, here's the question out of the self, too. Will the mid laner, as we saw right there, can manage to face off the the uh, the MF and his fortune right there? Because look at look at the CS. Although the CS is way gap as it is, the the master player has two sixteen along with MF one ninety one because he's been focused on getting more kills than CS as it is. But the but the but the KDA of Miss Fortune six and two versus three and four. Although Cassiopeia did not have a good early game as it is, but now she's been scaling a little bit more. Oh. Oh, how oh! the fuck hit those? Oh, the god fist scoops another in. That is definitely not Blitzcrank. That is definitely not an alive Melio anymore. That might be enough to secure the inner tower top. Put up a meme. Somebody give this man a blitz. Yeah. Or what rather, an hook. I don't have to blitz, but. Hit here. Pause. But, uh... Man, what a hook. But um, like I said before, it's up to the depending. It's up to depending on the mid laner, the skillful master tier player of Cassiopeia, who managed to cross counter the uh that the tower defense, the tower invasion that the blue team was uh, Halo Spade was trying to focus upon, or the MF who has been doing so well along with the Mumu to basically push forward and be able to win this game out overall. Oh Rex, I look no forward. Way. Oh, but the smite was a hundred too early. The Baron is secured from Dion or yes, from Cassiopeia. Halo Spades. Cassiopeia. And now Dion's Burgundy wants to fight there. We have a Cassiopeia who's playing the front line now. Dawn is in the area, has the explosive cast, uh -oh. is going to land spring. it now. But here comes the bullet time. Amazing four man curse of the sad mummy puts the rest of the squad into their own sarcophagus. This is going to be the win for Hail of Spades, and they're going to be forcing a game number three. And like I said, this is something that they want to see uh, to the end right here too. They now know what uh, they now know what Dean Burgundy is capable of, and they see their limit as it is too. So now the only question is, now that DA Burgundy knows Hella Spades, what are they gonna do to get the carry to Swolus now? That's what I'm curious about. Because now they know that uh, Hella Spades' uh, heat win condition is the jungler, is the ADC. Not only that, the bot lane with a hook. But now they know the magic carry has to has to be Swoles, and as far as concerned, uh, the Swoles and uh, I guess Swoles to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're the carry. They try to put on their carry pants, but it was a little bit too little, a little bit too late. Hey, Juicy. I mean that was, you know, the early game domination that they were able to just cycle into the early dragons, picked up the barons. And they just got the team fights they wanted to be able to take that second game. Yeah, I really, I was looking for for a two and zero, oh, but seemingly how the uh, seemingly how Halo plays really came back for that game itself. Now that's now that's something I really wanted to see because obviously this is this is low, losers bracket. You you have no second chances once you lose this game. Uh, although it's best three, so you basically have a second chance. But once you lose this next game you basically are going to go home. And that's something I really want to see because we saw right in front of us that the damage scaling up their comp right there really shows us that damage really matters. And not, and last but not least, how you utilize it and how you apply it on some on a player right there can really turn the tide. Especially you saw as well as a uh, single manhandling, carrying, uh, defending the base at that one incident where Cassiopeia stunned Blitz and Misfortune right there, causing them to get a shutdown, causing her to get a shutdown, but end up getting killed by Blitzcrank as it is because that Blitzcrank, I don't know what the heck, just pogs, pog hooks every single time. So next game, I feel like they're gonna have to ban or they're gonna have to find out how to take that Blitzcrank away from them, or maybe so steal that Blitzcrank at the end. 
Yeah, I mean, lots to consider now for both of these teams, as if you thought that there was pressure on these teams before, now is when the real pressure kicks in, Juicy. This is now the game number three, where the winner advances to the semifinals and the loser goes home. Those first two games, neither of them matter now, because this next game is going to be for all of the marbles. We're going to take a, just a very short break as we get set and settled for game number three, the final game of this matchup. So you're not going to want to go anywhere to see who takes the cup here and moves on to the semifinals between Dianza Burgundy and Halo Spades. We'll see you in just a moment. As teams are readying up for game number three, we are back on Style Esports of our Targon Division Losers Bracket game number three. Juicy, this is going to be a heck of a game. After a pretty one sided game one, Hail of Spades bounced back in a major fashion with their 5v5 Wombo Combo team fight to secure the game two victory. And now this is it. This is game three of a best of three, the winner moves on, the loser goes home. Uh, I'm saying they're, I, I'm seeing that they're, also, they're still banning the Kaiser, and MF is now open. Now, I do like the MF as it is, but I do want to see a little more spicy. Let's put in a little bit of, uh, let's put in a little bit of Draven. I do want to see if Halo Blaze got what it takes, then let's put in Draven, because Draven, as damage itself, is really good. I, I played him before. He is very dangerous to, his, to this point, and I feel like Draven, along with maybe, let's say... I don't know who best support uh, who matched with uh, Draven, but maybe Blitzkrieg again. So if Paul get Blitzkrieg again and Halo's place again, having to get Draven, it's all over. I feel like that's going to be a good hit. Yeah, I mean, and really what I'm looking for in this third game is what you named at the end of that game too. Is like, how are you going to enable oh, no! carries to carry? Um, and Halo Spades... That Blitzcrank definitely carried. Pogs was the carry with some of those god hooks. So Burgundy has banded that away here in game number three. But now Halo Space has to force an option. Is Are they just going to give it with Emilio again? And they do seem to be. We'll see if Burgundy wants that. I thought the Blitzcrank was the biggest reason why Emilio wasn't successful. So maybe I don't... they're just going to go right back to it. I don't like the Milio. As you saw, Milio had nothing to do with the team fights, although just safely as it is too. But in team fights, was very useless. If I were you, maybe we just pull up a little bit like a um, I don't know. There are many champions to go from, but I don't think Milio is just a really good support at all uh, for now. Maybe like oh, they actually brought out Lilio. Oh no, the Lilio jungle is actually up now. So this yeah. is where. This is where I said Lily is very powerful, but in terms of level one and all that too, she's very vulnerable. So they have to put uh, look at Dean Burger is gonna have to protect her at all costs to make sure she gets up to level six, or maybe so get that ratio, that, uh, the AP ratio as it is. But like I said before, uh, Lily Jungle is very good. It's just how you use it. Now, if I were if I already if I were Halo Space to counter out the jungle, since Kindred is has been banned, I would mostly say okay, there's MF. I would most likely say 
Let's get. If it's Lilia, let's actually get um, Kajix for this guy. Uh, Catch us for Lilia because it's one shot and she's very squishy as it is. So if you jump on her, she actually dies one shot. So I'm wondering if that's going to be the case. Oh no, they're picking Mumu. Pick Melio. Pick Melio now. Now you can no, take Shattered no. Lens. That's great. Pick me don't pick Melio. That is so useless, not going to lie. Because if I were you. Melio. <laughs> No, I don't like Melio as it is too. I promise you, Melio is not a good pick if you're just gonna go for it again, Dia Burgundy. Just go for something else. Trust me. Literally, in this point, you want to pick something safer. You want to pick something that could definitely hold your hold your ground for damage. Also, maybe like I said before, it could be okay. There's a Varus pick as it is too. Hey, do you know in that a case, great support with uh, Varus. What? Uh, Melio. <laughs> <laughs> I I, I want to. Say, it's game three. Oh, but I, I, I honestly think there's too much trauma here. Uh, from um, but in any case, it. I do feel like I do feel like if you want to play, if you want to play hard to get though, then maybe playing uh Soraka, because Soraka mm. also will be really good too. But she's very vulnerable against the Mumu. No, the Melio, the Melio, the Melio against better judgment. The Melio is locked in, juicy, and you do not seem happy with that one. Well, it, it depends, because um. Varus is actually a much better pick for Ash uh, than Ash, because if you CC well enough, that's actually a good counter pick. Because Varus, if you empower W along with that, uh, how many stacks does it take to actually fully enhance uh, Varus's Q? I think it's three, and then it's either three, three or four, and then you get three, the, shot, uh, three, three shots, and then three shots and Q, right? Yep. Oh, they're going for the Trinity again. Okay, I see that they're going for the Trinity again for Hellish Blades. I mean, Blades. if it worked for him in King Number Two. This is literally the first same first three champions. And like we didn't talk about this much. Lunar has 1.5 million mastery points on this Diana. It is like a hyper comfort pick for this guy. Now, for the jungler, I'm assuming that's a jungler. So if it's not, since Blitzkrieg has been banned and all that too, uh, I would prefer if you're going to just go a move of support for the jungle, Master Yi. Because <laughs> uh, Millie will be very bad along with Lilia too. So if you just Q right in and just dodge whatever she has to offer, especially if you get sleep, for example, all you do is just press Q and then just you don't get sleep at all, I, I think. Yes, yes, that is, yeah, that's how that works with the sleep interaction. But, um, you know, in this game number two, they banned away the Poppy and the Malphite. Um, here they're taking away the cannon now from hail of spades it's proof of insurance they don't want they don't want yeah. cannon, they don't want cannon to get really ahead especially last time when it was orn that 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 uh, cannon actually popped right off as soon as the level one uh level one uh waves came in because cannon just poked with the range itself Orn couldn't do anything so i think that's I mean, the point just, they're trying to you just break the flex here and pick us a war right exactly yeah okay yeah. they're going for knowledge they're going for knowledge as it is uh Yes, yes, Maokai. I think it'd be Maokai flex for jungle or for support. Yeah, the, yes, it's a flex, but I don't think Amumu is good at all support into Melio. I think like the like it's such a hard counter in lane, which no, is why they sent the Amumu jungle. Here's my opinion. Don't here's my opinion. It is a 50 50 chance for Amumu to go even Melio. Uh, no, a 50 50 to go into Amumu with Varus, but it's a hundred percent for Amumu to go into Melio. Why? Because you need to, your all is the only one that can cleanse. And it looks like they're going for Jace, but like I said, if Mumu hits Milio, Milio's gonna have to ult right instant just make sure she doesn't get hit. Uh, just, she just gets cleansed right after. But if it's Varus, Varus could just counter out with the poke. <gasps> yes! Is this gonna be Jace? Gar like, I don't understand. Like, I get that it's comfort. Like, you probably want to be picking comfort in game number three. Garen, Garen, but... judgment opinion, judgment opinion. Pick Garen, spin the win, boys. Spin the win, dig it, burn it. Wow, Dawn Zero. Locking in the Garen in game number three in an elimination match. This is something that I don't really see from Don Zero. They play way more Jace. Is there a world where this is Garen mid? No. That doesn't feel like a place to no. win cons, right? I, no, because don't forget Diana's Q is uh, Mana Lagla. Uh, so she she doesn't really need to throw that much damage for, with her Q for Dana. Garen, although, has no mana. So, oh, they're picking the Gragas again. Oh, God. Wow, Hail of Spades this time, locking the Gragas as their last pick. Actually, <sighs> now that I think about it, Gragas against Garen is actually pretty good. Because it's, it's no mana versus mana, but Gra Gra Garen early game as it is. So this is actually a fair game. Yeah, Um. so back to very similar from game number two. 
the Hail of Spades 5v5 team fight. They won the bot lane with the Misfortune um, and Blitzcrank in game two. This time, I'm thinking it's going to be the Amumu support uh, with a Maokai jungle. At least that's what I expect to see. Um, but you still have the 5v5. Lunar's still playing Comfort. The biggest change here is Burgundy has a double poke composition here. And then you have a frontline, like pseudo frontline of Garen Lilia. Neither of those champs are going to be super massive. Um, your CC is not very reliable. You have Lilia Sleep, you have Varus Ultimate. Um, Burgundy really, really has to play the poke game, which is such a harder way to play team fights. And just Halo of Spades, press all your buttons when you're close to them, and then just win the team fight. I mean, here's my opinion. Here's my opinion about this. This is fair game. This is very close as it is too. If you look at the comps right here, <laughs> but it matters about who's on mid. Who is on mid of Dean Burgundy Llama? I mean, for Tia Burgundy, Dean Bur it's it's gonna be Jay Smith. Like, if you're the master tier player, I don't think you're calling for Garen mid in an elimination. Exactly. Game. Like, so you th so technically at this point, if, so technically if you if you analyze what seems to be more damage as it is, I feel like Jace mid would have to be the proper pick for that. Along with the ADC is misfortune as it is, but there's a flex, and I think there's gonna be a movement support because a movement support uh, has uh, two CCs as it is, the Q and the ult. Maokai can really dive right in, but that's gonna be very dangerous because oh no, is that gonna be? There. It's Wait. a Gary mid. Wait, I just realized it's not. Oh, it's Wallace well, Jungle. T don't tell me they're, they're going out of order on purpose. Are they going? Oh, oh, they are. They are not in order. Zwolla's. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. This actually might be Zwolla's jungle. So, I, if, any, if any case, I, this could be jungle div. This could be the point where they're actually going to go for the actual jungle div. Then. No, and, and they've done this before. In um, so they played Till Stars Fall. He played Kindred two games in a row. The series before that, they had another sub, and Zwolas actually played jungle in that series. And I think Zwolas in game three, the master tier player wants to put the map into their own hands, and they are picking the Lilia jungle for this squad in game number three. I feel an earthquake coming. I feel like earthquake. I feel an earthquake coming right now. And this one is this earthquake is gonna be the earthquake of. Like, I will call it the Earthquake of Leadership. Basically, the junglers. Who's going to be the one to initiate the gank as it is, too? And who's going to be successful with those team fights as it is, too? Because, remember, it's not only just laying itself. There's also objections. And as always, you need to be the one to get those uh, those objections uh, objectives to get some buffs. The uh, Herald or get the Baron. You, any of the, one of those objections, you are, you are, uh, you are its uh, designated champion basically so with Zwolas moving on to the jungle and I, I don't know who Malkai is gonna be the jungle I for, totally forgot again oh uh he's been jungling against um I have it up right now in front of me uh soup duck soup duck right so that's gonna be that as we all know that's the jungler that actually won a little bit ahead of time too so we're actually gonna see a huge a uh, little closer matchup between the master tier jungler and the carrier jungler as it is too. Yeah. I mean, this is very, very interesting to see. I mean, if they win it, they're geniuses. If they lose it, they're griefing, right? It feels like there's not really an in-between here. Um, I like the creativity and the flexibility here. I don't think Lilia is like a hard carry jungler though. It can be successful into some of these tanky front lines. And I think in this composition it works, but this isn't someone that's just going to 1v9 the game. And Zola's, we've seen their performances. They are the person that really needs to be the playmaker, you know, the faker in these games. And, I mean, this is it now. This is it for both of these teams. And I'm just curious to see what Zola's is going to make happen in this game. Uh, I mean, and I'm sorry to say, but since this is Garen is, Garen is mid against Diana, I, I highly would think. <sighs> Wait, actually, you never okay. know. You never know, actually, because although they might be in the same roster as this, they might lane swap. Because you saw uh, a long time ago, C9 versus Ooh. Team Liquid in Game 5. They lane swapped, if you guys yeah. remember. 
Fallen is lane swapped, even though they are technically in their roles as it is, they lane swap to make sure they can ensure that they advantage itself. So what did they pull out? What if they pull that off again and Garrus actually top and Jace is mid? Because I do think that's a safer pick to which Jace can actually poke more than Diana. Because if Garen is going for Diana, Diana, like I said before, just kills any single anytime she wants and still get the CS and plays very much safe. Garen can't really do anything. All he does is Q and spin to win. Um, he has and he has to get close to Diana to get damage at least. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see now. It is just a matter of moments until we hit the rift for game number three here. This is Styly Sports playoffs of the Targon division. Dionza Burgundy versus Hail of Spades. We're going to take a quick break during the spectator delay. On the other side, it's do or die for both of these teams. You don't want to miss it. Welcome back to Summoner's Rift of game number three here of the Targon Style Esports Season 15 playoffs. We have Dionza Burgundy. We have Hail of Spades. I am Llama. We got Juicy. This is going to be a banger do or die game number three. Uh, especially that we got a freaking Garen mid and Jace top as it is. Or it could be swift around because... We have saw something that we have not really expected for a loser's bracket thing, especially the third game to which this game could determine all. We have Swoles, who actually was formerly mid, to move on to the jungle. So I'm actually very sad. I'm actually very surprised to see this to move on to swap players as it is too, so that we can actually see a little more distinction of skill from different roles. Yeah, I mean, this is the master tier top ranked player for this team here who has had some great performances in the series so far, taking this game number three Lilia into their own hands 
And now you have to see how can Tilt Stars fall play this mid lane matchup. Maybe they like the matchup into the Diana here with the Garen. Um, this is going to be interesting to see. And really, my eyes are going to be on Zuolas. How can they influence this early game? Like, Lily has got to hit level six, has opportunities to scale and just carry this match. But that's really what I'm going to be looking at. And how can Alpha, Alpha Eris play this lane again? Because they had an amazing game number two on this team. Okay, I just realized I just realized right now that Garen is actually beating up, beating up Diana pretty well. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing that I'm seeing I'm actually curious about Diana's passive actually. So it's only at, it's only if she autos or uh, any min, any menu or any person, right? Her passive increase as it is, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, then I was gonna say because that means because that means that this, this Diana is kind of being afraid of this Garen right now as he is trying to be a little more aggressive on her. And that's why I'm very concerned because you're not supposed to be very, you're not supposed to be uh, passive on a Garen when he's Bay level one. Not, he, he has good damage, but not so much to the point where you shouldn't be able to die like really often, you know? There you go, like that. Do you see that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Garen does have just more built in sustain in their kit, but this is melee versus melee matchup as well. So Garen might be able to trade successfully, but really when the level six comes in, that's when I'm looking to see what the Demacian Justice can do to shut down this Diana. Not something that you typically see here. Dawn's going to be in trouble now in the top lane. Dawn's just going to be going down here. Oh, he had flash for that, but that's okay. Uh, and I'm assuming that comes from Halo Space, right? Halo Space gets the first blood? Yep, I mean, that's first blood. Oh, actually, Mommy wrote it and picked that up. Yeah, but it is um, Halo Spades' side here. Picks that up early, forces the teleport in. I mean, we saw Mommy Roden get the advantage in game one and now game three, but Z Wool is forced to flash away. Dawn is teleported here. There's no, why no would you gain? Why would you? Oh my god. That they survive. Z Wool is now able to capitalize on a state from Suit Duck. I was, I was say, Malkai could have survived on that point if he just got a little bit closer to uh, Gragas also. Yeah, but instead does end up falling there. And Zewola is the player we need to see be the carry off to an early advantage in the jungle. Okay, so it's a little distinction actually. We see, actually see uh, DA Burgundy actually doing a little bit, uh, top and mid, actually doing a little bit of work. They're actually doing really good onto their opponents as it is. So you see Jace actually talking and poking on Gragas. Gragas is a melee, but the only thing Gragas can do is just throw Qs to farm clear. But at the same time, Garen, although he's a melee and Diana should be poking him, Ashley's actually get, getting aggressive with her a lot, actually. Yeah, now Z Wallace is going to be back into the top uh -oh. side. Dawn's going low, but Mommy Rodent could be the one in trouble. Doesn't have the flash available. Z Wallace is full health. Tries to get some damage under tower and will. This can be a crashing wave. We'll see if they look for the dive. They have at least one ward. They might be looking to try to take Mommy Rodent down with no teleport, no flash available. This might be the angle, but bot side is going to get engaged on getting aggressive here. See, Wool is going to be taking it on up, has the flash available, flashes away. Don also responds. A beautiful play in the top side gets a kill onto Mommy Rodent and two kills now to Z Wool's top. It was a nice bit of a attempt for Gregus to just go under tower and just get the kill on tower, but. No, he didn't. Uh, Jace walked away safely with this flash. So that was actually a typical, typical as a, a, it's just dive right in, dive deep with the master tier jungler as it is. And it's just flashing away as if nothing happened. Yep. And I mean, this is an amazing level one start or a uh, first clear start from Zewolos. Resetting with the last chapter, has another amp tome. And take a look at that dark seal too. This is a player looking to just scale, flash on forward. From Tillstars, responded from Lunar. The bowling ball down the mid lane was awesome, but Tillstars fall. Bill, Bill, there we go. Off more than they could chew. And let's go to Flash at level seven mastery now. Uh, Lunar SSBM showing that they still know how to pilot this champion and get a kill for themselves in the mid lane. Yeah, that's why I knew. I told, I totally called it. The fact that now Dan is a little bit ahead like that with damage, then she was able to park. Uh, she able to poke. Garen real bad and just dive right in. I was surprised. I would say I am surprised though that Garen did not pull his ignite, considering that he would he would have just stopped Diana a little bit in her tracks and slow it down a little bit, and gotten maybe gotten a kill Raptor. Yeah, or played a little more safer. Greedy. I mean, he saw the bowling ball hit and thought there might have been damage, but Lunar able to successfully back off, and so now it's gonna be a level uh, disadvantage now for Till Stars fall in the mid lane, and this is a guy that got you know swapped into mid lane here in game number three. 
and not really doing so great now. But Z-Wool is, is level six in his top lane. If this World Seed lands, that's going to be the ultimate. Now, look at uh -oh. That's going to be one <laughs> asleep. Gragas, no flash available. Maybe too many Ooh. drinks for you tonight, buddy. We'll see if Z-Wool is able to make a play happen, but just going to walk on out of there. Soup Duck now in the top lane to hover around their top laner. And it is going to be Hail of Spades disengaging from this top lane play. Yeah, oh, but they want to turn it now. Four members up here, and Pogs is in the area now. Lunar has the ultimate available. Can they uh -oh. get on to the Z Wollas? Z Wollas doesn't have flash, neither does Dawn Zero. No this be four way! Members coming on down. Lunar showing the mastery points with the moon fall and taken down too. It's going to be Dawn and Z Wollas biting off more than they can chew in the top lane. And two more kills in Diana's pocket. Halo of Spades has brought this game right back into their advantage. So, Llama, you either said it's going to be a genius IQ play or the fact that griefing. I think we may get to what they're, what they're going to do right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this becomes scarier. z is they're trying to be the playmaker. They're trying to push the tempo. They got the level six in the play, but then they're just going too far too fast. I named it an early game. Lilia is not an early game champion. They can do things early game like we've seen, but this is not a champion that is the level six crazy team fight menace. And we saw how hard it just got punished there. Like, yes, you were ahead, but now you have to slow down. You got to scale. You got to farm up, get a couple of items, and then go back to this aggressive style because it's getting punished amazingly from Halo Space. And Halo Spades is punishing once again. Ohas is in trouble. There is the bullet time. Alpharis slaying down the enemy there. Jonah here also Ooh. going to fall. Double kill full for Alpharis. This MMF is back online. Mommy Rodent trading aggressively top lane. Alpharis once again showing the dominance of this misfortune. Yeah, especially, like I said, you don't want to give the combo a Womble combo to the ADC and mid. Those two absolutely demolished uh, DA and Burgundy on that second game because of those two champions, along with Mumu as a jungler. So that trinity of CC and damage as well is gonna hurt a lot. So that's why I'm very concerned that if you keep pushing, if they keep pushing, if blue team DA and Burgundy keeps pushing yourself, that they may get a little bit, uh, you said before, more than what they, more what they can chew on upon and get bitten off. And for what I see, what I see for the experience itself is the fact that you need, especially with DA Burgundy, you need frontline. And the yeah. only person who is frontline at this point is Garen. Because Garen, now he has ult with, with true damage as it is, then you kind of need that Demacy and Justice to jump right in and basically turn the tide. And the only person who can basically throw off, like, uh, who can basically one shot. Any any person with that uh, with the Moss Injustice, that's gotta be MF or uh, that's gonna be MF basically. Yeah, and and it is so challenging because you can't just run through the rest of these tanky members. Fights have to be very extended when you have champions like Lily on your team because this is not a hundred to zero kind of jungler. You need to get a lot of these uh, cues off in team fights. The blooming blows need to land time and time again to really shred through the tanky health bars. And this can be really challenging, like you said, to find the right targets, find the target selection. Pogs down with level six is just roaming around the map once again. And Hail of Spades is just trying to take advantage of this mid game. I mean, right now we're going to wait for Garen. Garen is going to be the one factor that can totally uh, transform and be able to turn the tide of the game. And from what I see at this point, too, I think that Garen would be a great advantage. If he is given a little more insurance, like I said, there's, there's got to be proof of insurance. Garen, his proof of insurance is his R. He's got to find a way to, base, to basically jump into the fight without getting hurt. Obviously, with his W, it allows him to be shielded up. But even so, he's got to find a way to position himself correctly, get in that fight, use the spin to win E, and last but not least, if someone's low, finish it off with that R and be able to turn the tide, especially using that R on MF because a a MF or Diana is really strong right now. Yeah, but they, you know, this Garen is so far away from being a critical mass yet. And so I'm still taking a look at what these other members are going to be able to do because the mid and ADC of Hail of Blades, Spades, are so 
far extended in this advantage. Single-handedly, the mid lane, 1,400 gold difference. In the bot lane, 400 gold difference. There's 1,000 gold separating these two teams, and all of that is stored on Lunar. They're having another amazing early game here, even into kind of an untraditional pick here. But they seem to really be showing up in the mid lane. So I'm still looking at Diana to be the playmaker in these fights because Garen is still a ways from being that major impact that we need to see him be in this third game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be interesting, though. Lilia's trying to just farm on up. Oh, my. Oh, there it is. Finding a great cask on to Dawn Zero. Dawn Zero has Flash available, but they know they're not long for this world. They're going to Flash away. <laughs> oh, out. no, it's a close up. Going, the fadeaway cask picks up the kill and gets the Flash to go with. Now Z Wolves is in the top side. Might be trying to find Lunar. Does find Lunar now. Has a little lullaby, but is not going to use that. Instead of just picking up this wave, getting more gold into their own pockets. I mean, that 1,400 gold lead I talked about in the mid lane is matched in the jungle. Z Wool is up 1,400 gold over Suit Duck. So, I mean, you know, gold lead still is an advantage now. Just about 1,000 gold for Hail of Spades, but not nearly the advantage we saw in game number two. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do something I've always been doing. This is my signature... This always has always been my signature here in Styles Esports. I'm sorry, but I'm about to do the caster curse again. <laughs> All right, what's the curse? So we actually see that uh, we actually see the only people who are actually ahead of the head of the head of the uh, spree is MF and Dinah. and yeah. the fact that and the fact that this ADC has now has now been accomplished has now accomplished game two before with with MF, especially getting so far ahead with with that same champion. I'm gonna make a. I'm gonna make a. I'm gonna make try to make a bet with this uh, ADC. Go deathless, but try to go with at least eight kills or more. <laughs> is this for misfortune? You think he's gonna try yeah, to go only for misfortune deathless or eight kills. deathless eight and zero or more? Or on Diana, she can either go six and zero or more. That might be the caster curse there, but this is looking good so far for Hail of Spades. Diana's not going to go down yet, but they're going to get their own kill too. Tillstar's Fall is going to flash on out of there. Already Diana's starting to do well. I mean, we don't want to cast her curse it quite yet, but they might be getting it there. And yeah, winning in the mid, winning in the top lane. Hail of Spades just popping off now at the 14 minute mark. There's the four, there's the four. No, I hope they heard this. Now they're going to go for the six and oh more. <laughs> Yeah, the dragon is going to be started from Halo of Spades as well. The turret plates fall, and this dragon will be soon to follow. Yeah, another great advantage now from this early game. And yep, I mean, the caster curse might be what's needed because this mid you see are both looking very, very strong for Halo of Spades. And remember what I said about Milio? You saw right now what Milio is trying to do. Although the 80 auto attack was really kind of dealt a little bit less than we expected. But you saw the abilities of which uh, uh, Milio tried to handle with Varus and as uh, on the bot lane, especially when uh, Maokai tried to gank bot lane, but Milio couldn't do anything. Ends up getting killed. Uh, ends up dying on to the hands of a misfortune, right? So that's why I said Milio is kind of useless if you don't know where to basically use her for. Because right now Milio is technically as a healer. You don't want to basically use her as some sort of last resort for somebody to basically carry. If you know you're gonna be good at the person, you gotta know like your role especially. So I feel like support is. A little more over exaggerated because if you pick Milio itself, then what is Milio known for? Oh, uh, Milio is known to getting caught. It looks like is going to flash away, but followed on up. I guess that's what Milio is doing is uh, just dying here, Juicy. That's what I'm saying. You can't really. That's why Milio is so useless, especially if you don't know what she's for. It's, you saw that she was wide open there, and that is why I think that Milio is not really good because of the fact that because of the fact that oh. nobody, I don't think nobody knows how to use her. Pogs is in a little bit of trouble here. He's going to be going low, but Flash is on forward. Here comes another great ult here from the Diana. They're going to fall asleep, but it doesn't matter because the bodies are still hitting the floor. Tillstar's Fall does not have a Flash themselves. Another two kills picked up for the side of Halo Spades. And this is going to be their Rift Herald as well. They're continuing to extend this advantage. There's 3-0 for Miss Fortune again, 4-0 for Diana. Now let's let me give a little more Cassacris for her also. If by any chance, but if by any chance, <laughs> if by any chance should de should destiny be fallen upon, give misfortune or Dana a pentakill also. Let's give it a little oh. more curse as it is. Because yeah, might as well. I mean, there is no way that Diana and misfortune die at all this game, right? 
and based on my calculations, as I see from Diana scaling all uh, scaling damage at this, Diana, if you for Alton as perfect team fight as it is, could could potentially be as much as a team uh as much as an AOE five man to create a pentakill. Misfortune, maybe so or not, because I think I think that. I think the misfortune is all is just basically has to do something with like uh if you are really ahead and therefore you just need to have a little more spatial like a little more area to where in a fog of war you're safely behind enemy enemy lines or in, the, in that point at the same at the same time you do need to have the damage itself to basically throw all get a little more damage for the team team to come in and then basically like have dan jump right in and all right at the same time to give a pentakill so that's why I'm wondering how much will the MF be able to scale uh, for her build? And you see that's Yomus. There's also the serrated Dirk right there too. Pickaxe. Oh. Oh, Pogs misses the point blank cue. Okay. I'll say the pickaxe though. I wonder if what's what's that for? The pickaxe and the serrated Dirk. Um, I think it's it definitely builds into Edge of Night. I think that could be a good option to just soak up at least one of the primary CCs. Um, there might be another item too that builds into it, but I'm kind of thinking Edge of Night might be the choice here for Alpharus. Because they just need to like stand for far enough back and let the frontline do frontline things. Just take the fight from there. But I mean, you've set it up here, Juicy. It's looking like the next fight is going to have to be around an objective unless Pogs gets cut out a little bit ahead of time. But with 90 seconds now until the third dragon, this is where I expect to see the side of Hail of Spades continue to excel because they were able to find a lot of success around these 5v5 team fights and have drafted very specifically for that timing window. But with just a minute left and two items starting to get completed for some of these characters, this is going to be a key turning point now. Can Dionza Burgundy fight this straight on up as a 5v5, or will the just AoE wombo combo of Hail of Spades really secure this advantage that they've already built for themselves? We're going to be seeing what's going to happen just like 40 seconds here. But I think this is really, really challenging still for Dionza Burgundy to play into. Okay, it's not, it, it is not, um, it is not, what's it called? Um, it's actually collectors. MF is actually building collectors. Oh, interesting. So that's the brings the question itself because like I said MF is so far ahead that I think collector is kind of a good pick for her, a good bail for her too, especially if you know the fight itself. I just saw Diana Mash brings it in as it is, and Maokai just make sure anyone doesn't move at all. That's yeah, CC as it is. I mean, critically, that item is not completed for this dragon. So even though that might be what they're going for. They don't have that completed item here. Till Stars Fall is going to run under their tower, but four members. Oh, Pogs, I don't know if you wanted to necessarily take that. And now Z Wolves is going to be able to collapse on this. Lilia is prancing over towards this other members of Hail of Spades. Four members now collapsing. The teleport available from Dawn Zero in the top lane, but five members posturing here. Here comes the teleport now. Two men with the Swirl Seed, still 8,000 health. And it is going to be Hail of Spades backing off of this dragon. They're just going to try to take mid lane, even though they drafted the 5v5, Juicy. And like I said, they're going to play safe. They know they're ahead of the score. Look at that, 3 and 12. They're 9 kills ahead. And it looks like they're actually going to go for a little more. Is that a 3 tower push? Is that a 3 tower push? If they can take this pinch right here, they might be able to push for 3 towers. And now you have to decide if you're going to be able to pick this up here. But you have the poke on your side if you're a Gionza Burgundy. This third that crash is going to come through just like you called, Juicy. This might be the three-tower push now. Oh, and they're going to be looking for the dive as well. And it's going to be amazing. No way to ending this it. The task from Gragas is going to knock them on back. But two kills already completed by Hail of Spades. Now Alfaris is turning up the guns and smacking them on down. The inhibitor's falling in 20 minutes, and the Herald is still alive. z Wolves is here now, and you have to run. You have taken three towers. You've taken the inhibitor. But now if you're a Hail of Spades, you need to run and take that win from that team fight. Uh, that's actually a huge advantage. Oh, like I said, volume ball. That's actually a huge, a huge advantage for uh, Hell of Spades because that gives what well, this is what I call an open mid lane. The op an open lane basically means that all, all obviously all the towers have been taken down as it is, and the inhibitor has been exposed or taken down, which gives them which gives them inhibitor minions, super minions as it is, which gives them a lot more good push. For when they go for objectives, like for example, a Baron's up, so they can actually go for the Baron rush if they want to. 
And we've seen both of these teams in the last two games take Baron incredibly early off of spawn. In game one, it was Jones and Burgundy taking the 20-minute Baron. And in game two, it was Hail of Spades able to take it before 21 minutes. And now, 21-15 into game number three, the do-or-die game, with a couple of pink wards in vision. And like you said, that mid lane prial with super minions, this is going to be Hail of Spades onto the Baron once again. And I don't think there's even going to be a contest from Dianza Burgundy. Okay, I'm seeing the team fight coming in, and I hope that they're able to survive within that moment. Like I said, the cast of curse. Hope like nobody even dies on that point. But um, yeah, that's safely as it is too. But like I said before, you see the, you see how the, you see how uh the, how you see how Dean Burgundy is basically just trying to push in uh the wave. So just make sure they don't want to have any inhi inhibitor minions, lo uh taking down all of their original, all of their regular minions. That it is. So look at that. So look, at the MF is actually carrying the, uh, pushing the charge as it is on that top the tower right there. Oh, Dawn's going to be in trouble. Lunar is going to go into the Zonias a little bit, and they're going to get the first kill. Pogs now with the two-man curse, the Sad Mummy. It's going to be looking for a little bit more Mommy now in the area as well. Maybe they're going to try to get it on there, but the Arch can siege the tower instead. The minions are still purple, and with the Baron buff, they're going to continue to push on in. Five members still holding strong from Hail of Spades. This wave is crashing now in Z-Wolves. This is the guy that was trying to be the carry, but Twitten's completed, and short range, this deer is not going to be able to do very much. Now let's see if this win. Oh, MS also got hit by Lilia. Ah, uh, don't die. Yeah, but there's still so much pressure. Only a minute gone on this Baron so far. Another wave of reinforcements are coming from behind. The tower is getting low, and this might be another look to force. Lunar does not have their Moonfall up available quite yet, but Mommy wants to try to get a kill. They know that Lily is the focus, but will not find any kills. Even using the bullet time does not kill anyone on Burgundy's side. Now Tillstar's Fall is going to try to push back up, but Pogs is going to stay out front. So Duck gets hit, and now the reset comes through from Alfaris. The rest of the squad needs to try to disengage until Stars Fall is going to flash oh. on forward. Lunar on the side. They're going to be looking for the back line. They got the flash. They got the moonfall. They got the AD carry. Z Wolves now is slow. The shutdown comes over onto the Garen now. And now Pogs are forced to run. They are ignited. Mommy rode it with a double kill, but traded back. Z Wolves gets their own kill themselves. <laughs> Another one over. It is two. For three for three, two members alive on both sides, and Z Wolves does not want to stop. No fighting way, yet. but Alfaris has oh, come no. back from the base. This Lily has forced to run. Get out of here, little deer. You might not be Bambi, but I still think you're gonna get shot in the head from the misfortune. Still gonna survive for just a little more longer, but the minions are doing so much work. Just the healing now coming through. This oh. deer is prancing away. You survived the hunter for just one moment longer and ultimately an even trade is going to advantage the end of burgundy well uh the cast of curse has been fulfilled one half of it well one third of it or one one quarter and that is actually no, technically one half and that is diana actually has now four and one so diana will not be getting that uh, clean game as it is but mf is still standing four and oh which means that i'm actually excited to see if she actually got what it takes to actually pull beyond they call a measure and just go for a deathless game as it is because we've seen we've seen a lot of her we've seen a lot of uh, a lot of the ADC actually moving around positioning herself really great and I just noticed right now MF has first strike which is very crucial if you especially going to be very ahead of, if you're very ahead and being aggressive in terms of damage. Yeah, and I mean you have to still deal with the poke that comes out from Dionza Burgundy. But ultimately, with no poke around here, this is going to secure them the sole point. Now, three dragons in their name. Now, five minutes until, until they can attempt that. But this squad still going to be ahead here. Zewol's on three items now completed. Lilia's come online, but now Lilia might be the one getting caught. In game number three, the Masters player who has roll swapped is shut down. You see Zwolves going into the gray screen. And now in a 5v4, the rest of the members of Halo Spades are going to try to end this game. At least take that inhibitor, maybe take two. And five members have flooded into the base. Four members from Burgundy need to try to hold. They're going to drop one inhibitor and try to All look right. for the top lane inhibitor as well. They are trying to they are trying to get as much advantage as they can with getting these two of these inhibitors, uh, especially now that with these uh, open two lanes right here, they actually have they actually have no way no chance. Oh, nature's grasp is looking for something, but nothing is gonna be found. 
at this point, rotate to the bot lane. You still have a standing outer tower and a standing inner tower, Josie. They just got to rotate down here, pick up that wave. Who cares if you don't have the Baron anymore? Just take the standing gold because that just frees up the map even more when this Baron spawns in 90 seconds. And like I said before, once you have that, once you have that open lane, it gives you a little more insurance for you to farm safer. Uh, oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> I thought it was like, I, I crashed. So I was like, wait a second, what's going on here? Uh, actually, they're actually going to be waiting for that too. But like I said, more insurance on the fact that you, uh, you can actually have your uh, any laners farm a lot and be able to farm really good on account of like, say for example, you're ahead of the group and you really uh, you really want to like show that your uh, show your strength as it is. So therefore, you kind of have to wait. You kind of have to wait. You got to pay to play a little more safer as it is. Or at the same time, you're gonna just play like what they did right now. They were just hovering around the bush and see one person just being the victim of a face check bush right there. Yep, but gratefully, Burgundy did not fall victim to the trap. They are correctly staying in their base and farming up these super minion waves, trying to hit critical mass. But there is an entire item difference between Alfaris and Jonger in the ADC role. There is an entire item difference there, and that's really the pressure point that we've seen Alfaris be able to capitalize on time and time again in that second game. With the gold advantage, it is nearly even in these other lanes. Gragas, though, has a significant advantage over the 0 and 7 Jace top lane, also with an entire item advantage here. So they're trying to clear out this minion wave here, try to position for the Baron, but a great sweep out now. Hail of Blades, Hail of Spades is looking for the engage. Mommy Rodent's going to be the first one to go. An amazing ultimate no! here is going to stop this pressure. However, the Baron is available, but there is a counter push from the Dawn Zero top laner in the bot lane. They're going to try to take this inner tower, and now you're forced into a decision. Can Hail of Spades take this Baron fast enough? Two members trying to respond, but the mid lane push is going to come through. Here comes the shot calling from Dionza Burgundy. They're just going to try to give up the Baron and play for the towers instead. They take an inner tower in the mid lane. They take an inner tower in the bot lane. The Baron is given up by Hail of Spades, and they're pinging onto the base. They're super mean, starting to flood on in. They're going to try to keep this. Can you get back in time? Yeah, they can, they can go back. Oh, actually, oh, no. But the Baron, these minions are purple. Dawn's going to go in. Zero and seven. So might have the damage. Have to flash away defensively now. Till Tilsar's follows. Oh, him. MF. Lydia MF. Is not <laughs> Alfaris. Still trying to keep that caster curse from happening. z Wolves wants to continue to push. Lunar is on the front line. Is going to have to flash away defensively. Oh, but the flash oh, no. on forward. <laughs> shut down onto Misfortune. The caster curse has come true. Here comes the sleep. And there goes Maokai. Pogs with an amazing ultimate curse. The sad mummy's gonna land onto a couple. But now John Gurr in this critical team fight is gonna pick up a couple of kills. Flashes away perfectly. Lunar goes into this Azonia state. But John Gurr gets a triple kill in the game that matters when it matters. This Varus picks up their first three kills of the game and keeps the hopes of Dionzo Burgundy alive in game number three. Well, that was very unexpected though, because. We thought they were gonna. We thought they were gonna actually gonna carry that tide of the game right there too. But it looks like, it looks like actually, oh yeah. But I'll say, looks like the, it looks like uh, D Burgundy. Now they have finally the comeback they wanted now, and then they're gonna have to try their best to make up for it. And look at this. Although, although all the lanes has been pushed up for the red side also, but if you look right here, the towers are still intact on the red side space, but blue side is very exposed. So this could be anybody's game. But if they win one, if blue team, if if the if the Burgundy blue side has won one more team fight as it is, they could just push mid and win end this game as we speak. Absolutely, they can, and it's going to come down to this dragon juicy. This could be the infernal soul if it is claimed from Hail of Spades, but it's going to be Burgundy. The first one's onto the objective. Mommy Rodent has teleport available when they spawn in 10 seconds, and Lunar is not in the area. They do not have the Zonias. The Dragon is already going low. Pogs is going to try to look for the engage. It is going to be the dragon secured. Pogs only gets one with that flash. Amumu is already down. Lunar is already down. Burgundy is winning this team fight. Dawn Zero might be zero and five, but they are still looking for the fights. They get some damage down. Suit Duck now in trouble. The dragon is secured. Five members are alive from Burgundy, and they want to chase even another kill just trying to survive as long as they can. Suit Duck does fall. Mommy's Rodent does have to run as the one surviving member, but they pick up a kill in the meantime. It is 
three members slain from Burgundy. They are not giving up this game. They are not giving up this series. They are not giving up their playoff hopes. They continue to push on forward. This star shot caller from the Jungle Z Wolves is holding this team all together. Oh, this is giving me a heart attack as we speak right now, too. Because look at, they're actually pushing really good onto the mid lane. They're actually doing what they're supposed to be doing to make sure they have a redemption here. But like I said, it all takes it all takes out one team fight. They managed to push on a huge heavy advantage for lane. And they did do one more team fight. One more team fight, especially with we see that the, that the Baron is actually coming up two minutes and forty seconds. That it's gonna be a Baron push. Not an elder not 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 yet a soul, but yeah. yet an L it's actually gonna be a Baron push here. And what I'm noticing too, we talked about this just a little bit ago, Juicy, was the ADC item advantage. I said that misfortune was up an entire item. That has evaporated. Junker was 0, 2, and 3. They are now 5, 2, and 4 with a 1,000 gold shutdown and a 1,000 gold individual advantage over Alpharus. This Varus has come online now with nearly four completed items themselves, while Misfortune has just completely stalled out. And now with this later game team fight, Lily has come online. Even the 07 Jace is at three items and starting to become very valuable. And it feels like you're starting to run out of steam as Lunar is not able to get to that critical three items until right now on this back. So maybe the death cap is the really deciding factor here. This just feels like the momentum has completely swung back the other way. And honestly, I don't even know how Burgundy's done it. I mean, it all depends on Diana's positioning. Like I said before, Diana got caught in that fight real bad, and because she she couldn't pull all as we speak. Therefore, when she tried to dive right in, she got caught by the Lilia, and that caused her to sleep at this point. Which means that in this fight, if if Diana gets pulled once again, if Diana gets caught in the middle of the fight once again badly, then she, then this uh, then Halo Spades are just gonna lose real bad. Because... Oh, but Lilia might be the one getting caught really badly here. It's gonna come to Nature's Grasp as well. They've already used two ultimates for this one kill, but they do get the shutdown. Is it gonna be enough though? Duan Zero does have to flash away. Zhong Yuan Ger is still alive. Mommy wrote it with an amazing cast, thrown the Varus into the team. This might be the fight that they need. A thousand gold shutdown, but take a look at the base. Take a look at the Scarin. Tillstar's fall is splitting and is behind. Olhas is going to fall themselves, but a reset needs to come through. Can Don Zero hold on to the base? They have to stay right here. Only one Nexus Tower is still alive. Garen is staying. I think they're just going to end it. I think they're just going to end it. There's not a minion wave. Don Zero has to be the playmaker, maker, and here is going to come the ultimate down. Do they have enough? They do. They're going to take this Nexus Tower, but Tillstar's Fall has reset themselves. Can they hold 1v5? The Nexus is under pressure. The squad oh, is easy. ending. Hail of Spades in the 11th hour takes the Nexus takes this series, takes the semifinals, and they are going to lock out Dionza Burgundy from moving on. As always, I got a heart attack a little bit too, but that was a good game. Good game for both teams. They played really close as it is too, but I, if obviously if you're going to put in a player of the series right there too, because everyone, every winning team must have one, that has got to be the misfortune or the Diana at this point, because I would say this is the misfortune. It would be uh, I forgot his name again. Let me look it up. That, yeah, but that, Alvarez. but that guy really did the numbers on to uh, DM Burgundy, and I really see that they really need uh, him as the frontliner, uh, especially not a frontliner, but him him as the damage person, the damage dealer. Obviously, since he's eighty carry, to basically push forward and see. How much he has to offer for that MF. Now, obviously, we only saw the MF and that Ash. Even if we saw the first game, the Ash, he ulted every single time, uh, almost close as directly as it is. So he actually played a really nice game as Ash, despite the fact that they lost that first game, but came back those two games on the on on the reverse sweep. And now, the only question is that for the other teams itself, now that they've seen if they've seen this game basically. How will they try to counter out against his ADC also? Because if you saw right there, he only played MF, but who knows? They could be playing other other champions as it is because uh, we all know that MF has the, has the strongest uh, damage scale as AD to basically push as with Yomo's Ghost Blade, the Collectors, especially going with... Um, we also think she went to PTA, or in the fact that going with First Strike actually helps a lot. 
but also with the fact that you can go over heal and i mentioned before you can just go over heal get that shield and just have that passive itself but you saw kind of a little more defiant as it is too to show that you don't need that movement speed you don't need uh you don't need that skill to just basically just run away as fast as you can basically but then to have that damage and to have that uh to have that carry in front of you with that poke that's uh with the bounce shot and all too that's going to be a huge factor i think coming from the side of halo space which caused them to win i feel like yeah, the misfortune absolutely was a major playmaker there, Juicy, as you have outlined. Um, and so now, based on that performance, Hail of Spades does advance with a 2-1 victory to play in the semifinals against Coco Melon Gaming. Coco Melon and Hail of Spades started off the playoffs together in round four, and it was Hail of Spades that took the victory and pushed Coco Melon into the lower bracket. But Coco Melon has fought back, has beat PSE Black took down Mythic Academy as well. And now is going to be awaiting Hail of Spades in the semifinals. We'll have to see if this Hail of Spades squad is going to make it all the way to the finals to take on Team China, or will Coco Melon Gaming get their revenge? You're going to have to stay around for the future to see what happens. Meanwhile, we are going to bid adieu to Dionza Burgundy as they exit this tournament after some amazing performances, after some role swaps and catching off off guard. They had an amazing series themselves, Juicy, but uh, it was not enough to push them forward. But Hail of Spades, the victor, moves on to the semifinals. Yeah, GG right there too, especially uh, De Deonza Burgundy has done a really nice job. Uh, but like I said before, uh, only one is either go big, go home, only one can advance further. But the dress that we saw is actually pretty good. And I'm excited to see what new things they ha uh, Halo Blaze have to offer now to go on for that revenge match as it is. Yes, absolutely. But you are going to have to wait until next time to catch that action live on Style Esports. For this evening, I have been Llama. Joined aside me was Juicy for this best of three action. And it was best of three action going the distance in all three games. So that's going to do it for us for the evening. We hope that you enjoyed the action as much as we did. And as we're closing off, make sure that you are sticking around for more action later this week of the Style Esports Season 15 playoff run in all of our divisions as we are wrapping up in these next couple of weeks. And we will see you next time live here on Style Esports. Mm -hmm.